Hello and welcome to DCP episode number 137. We got a great week. Great episode this week. We got Nem plays on the show. How you doing, Nem? Good. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for being on. Uh, we got lots to talk about in the DCP. I mean, uh, in the TWAB. <laughs> yeah, in the DCP, in the TWAB, you know. <laughs> we wrote it. Yeah, this we week. wrote the TWAB. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, after last week. Yeah, <laughs> after last week, uh, we decided to take it over. Uh, so, yeah, the show is uh, brought to you by our uh, patrons, and we are they're very thankful for all that stuff. So thanks for supporting us, and let's kick it off. Fran, that's that, you. Is that a toss to me? <laughs> that was a toss to me. I you. like it. That that's was, a new that one a right punt. there, man. That was a punt. <laughs> all right. We're going to get into it because we have Nem on uh, from Planet Destiny. Uh, you're a content creator over there as well as um, – what did you say? I'm sorry. I read your intro and I totally forgot now. <laughs> See, now I screw up this week. A, a contributor and a content creator. He said a little bit of both. But um, yeah, yeah. Why, don't, why don't you start by telling everybody who doesn't know who you are, what you do today uh, that's relevant you know, in the world of Destiny over at Planet Destiny. Absolutely. So uh, I, along with weapon reviews and you know your weekly Zero videos, um, I work really, really closely with the brand manager, Moonvold. Um, in pretty much just making sure that our stream team is doing all right and they have you know all the resources they need and um, making sure that the podcast that I, I edit the video portion of that for for the YouTube channel goes hmm. goes out on time. Uh, so I'm I'll kind of everywhere with with Planet Destiny. Nice. It's nice. pretty much helping helping wherever it needs to be it helps. <laughs> You've been with them a while now, right? How long? Yeah, I I joined Planet Destiny back maybe a month before the Age of Triumph update came out in Destiny 1. Yeah. Um, but when I first joined PD, I joined as a as a streamer and eventually just kind of meandered my way over to different parts of the channel. Nice. Yeah. But it's been a while. I mean, basically, are you coming up on, is that three years or two? I think so, yeah. yeah. Wow. I've honestly yeah. lost track. But I can't do math because, yeah, I wish <laughs> Trials a happy anniversary after three years uh, the other day. And then I was like, right, nope. That's <laughs> Been four years. I can't do quick maths anymore. Um, Briar and Teft, were you guys just on a, their podcast? We were, yeah. Well? That's right. Their two nice. hundredth anniversary 200th. episode. That was a fun episode. Yeah, lots of nostalgia. That was a blast. Yeah, you guys have history there. I mean, maybe not. Everybody may not know that. Do you guys want to talk about your planet Destiny history? Uh, we don't talk about we, planet Destiny. Yeah, <laughs> we just have that's their no for me, dog. Their co-hosts and guests. <laughs> <laughs> the time. You yeah, we, did, the, we did I think episode 87 that. episodes. Was it 87 or 89 episodes of Planet Destiny's podcast? I think it was like 89. It's 89. Yeah. 89? I think so. It's a lot. Uh, when I was on the when we were on the show uh, on Sunday, look up Planet Destiny. They you posted on YouTube and on all the like iTunes and like all the Yeah. But look we had a great time with uh, everybody there. And we talked a lot about like the old days. We talked a lot about new stuff. We talked about the weapon nerfs because I wasn't on this podcast last week, so I had a lot to get <laughs> off my chest. <Yeah. laughs> uh, but it was a great, it was a great time. It was yep. fun to catch up with the crew and and uh, check a, out the old digs. Yeah, nice. Get a double dose of all y'all. Yeah, this week, which is actually really so. Being on, I'm gonna have to like just fangirl for a quick moment here. Um, being on DCP because you guys were the original, you know, crew from Planet Destiny is means a lot cuz you know going through through Destiny 1 you guys were like my source of information and like the podcast that I, I would tune in and listen to so it's just kind of crazy going almost like full circle now. So cool. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for coming on, yeah. man. So yeah, maybe tell us a little bit of how that that started, you know, how you got into it. What were you doing in the community at the time that you somehow, you know, you ended up on Planet Destiny after, you know, following it for a while? Man, so honestly, it was just kind of a stroke of luck and timing. Um, at the time, I was just basically just streaming on my own channel. And it kind of got to the point where I, I wanted to contribute to the community in, in, in a larger way. And I remember messaging the then manager of, of PD. It's like, hey, I know this is like a really rough time to ask because there's not a whole lot of, you know, stuff happening with Ri Rise of Iron because everything already had gone by. Like Outbreak Prime was already out there in the wild. So we were kind of in that 
middle ground of waiting for Age of Triumph to come out. So, I was, and I wrote them. I was like, "Hey, I, you know, I have the capture card. I have streaming software. I have editing software. Like, if you guys need somebody, um, I am more than willing to to help." Mm-hmm. So, when they got back to me, they messaged me that they needed people over on the Twitch channel. So, when I initially got onto Planet Destiny, I started off as a streamer for them. Nice, nice. And in the community, you were doing stuff as well, right? Um... Yeah, so it's well, sort of in in the community. I was at that time. I was part of a pretty large clan in on on Destiny and Bungie, and I would create stuff for them. So we kind of like amongst that little clan, we we had our own little podcasts that other people that lived in different time zones and stuff like that they would listen to, and I what would do name? like the Zer video. Uh, it was called Hero Unit hero unit and that was yeah they had like a bunch of different types of at at the time there were allegiances so we had allegiances you know in the uk and um you know all over the world it it was a pretty large clan but i used to do stuff for them yeah nice and when did you were telling me that you got into doing uh well not necessarily carries but teaching people how Mm -hmm. to raid and that became a passion for you had that been going on for a while or did you just start doing that when you started planet destiny no, so that actually started kind of within Planet Destiny because before joining, before joining the team, um, I ran raids pretty often and I knew them in and out. Um, and I noticed that a lot of people did, weren't too familiar with specific parts of the raids. Like, in, for example, the bridge in Crota's End. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't realize how to properly get through that encounter without... Because we cheesed it. So. Yeah, without <laughs> flying over the bridge with the sword, so... Um, when I first started on PD, it was more focused towards like the PVE side of things. So taking people through raids and stuff like that. Um, and it was a good time. I took, I managed to, uh, get a lot of people through. So nice. it was, it was, it was really fun. You, uh, end was funny because it, it literally did become a thing where nobody ran that bridge section normal. Yep. Yeah. Everybody no. cheesed it. And then when it came, when that raid came back around, and got updated, it, you'd go into a fire team, you'd get to that spot, and nobody knew how to do it normally. Yeah, and exactly. It was a really yeah, fun I, encounter. Yeah, you had yeah. to learn it like, like normal mm-hmm. uh, because yeah. we all like ran into the problems and, and issues, and like we had our own ways of cheesing it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone which, had their own individual way of cheesing every part, too, which mm-hmm. was funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Made Crota unique. Actually, I'm curious on everybody's list, like, where does Crota rank Crota's end against all the other raids? You know, is it in your top three, top five? Um, for me, mm-hmm. it's it's up there. King's Fall is one of my favorites, but Crota's end's way up there because it's just such a cool uh, feeling raid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but is it, it is, is a it, cool feeling raid. Yeah, honestly, but for does me, does it rank high for everyone? Yeah, yeah, it ranks pretty high for me because again, that's when Crota's end came out. That's when I joined that clan. Um, and I became one of the few like dedicated sword bearers for that. So I was constantly in that raid. So that, based on memories alone, it's, it's pretty high up there yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Yeah. It's pretty high. For I, I like it yeah. a lot. I, I do remember how broken it was when it launched. Yeah. Like it was, it was really broken. And, you know, she's in that raid was part, you know, like, well, let's just get through this quick, but part because Crota would just like, ch- Cheese yeah. us. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, he'd walk into the crystal room, he'd teleport around. Like sometimes like, it just got to right be away. like, all right, after four hours, we're just gonna pull this land cable because this is getting crazy. Oh, I loved it when he started chasing you. He he is the original <laughs> like knight that chases us. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. He's kinda the ascended knight vibes. I never thought of that. He totally was. Um yeah. but yeah, it was... I, the loot was really good too. I really liked the the whole yeah, I like Crota's End. I mean, yeah. it was nostalgic for me also because that's when I was kind of getting my uh, my bearings as a YouTuber, you know, making reset videos mm-hmm. and doing uh, reset raiders and all that. And so there's there's a nostalgia for me in that. But I, I think overall it was a good raid because it was manageable for teams. Once they knew it, mm-hmm. they can get in, they could do all three characters and get some good loot for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah, I used to do it every week with Toma, which is actually kind of nice yeah. now that – I know you have to be actually good at the game to solo and duo and stuff now, but it was nice having a, a raid that you could go in with 
you know, two people, three people, one person, and you could get that loot and get it done. And it was a different way of playing it, right? Mm -hmm. Doing it as a duo than with the full team. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. It was cool. Yeah, it was one of my favorite might still be my favorite. I have to think about entrances, you know, to get in and just like jumping down into yes. it. So cool. And then the yeah. abyss was so cool. Yeah. How dark I, it yeah. was and you didn't yeah. know where you were going and yeah, yeah giant, was, the giant door that really opens up and teleports you to the uh, the Senate realm, is that what it yeah. is? Yeah, like that. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, the, it the yeah, panic yeah. of that first few runs running through the <laughs> with all those thralls chasing it, it was just it was really fun it was really fun remember uh hunting down the the secret chests in 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 the oh, doors yes. trying to get that exotic so i oh, yeah. actually i opened it was like the first day that you could do that i went into the first door opened the chest and got fourth horseman which was fourth <laughs> nice. horseman had just come with that, that super rare. with that release so nice. i was yeah. like i was really happy about that yeah i remember and that was, raid always gave out no land beyonds also just Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like 80% of the time Tons Exotic of... was a No Land Beyond for me. Oh, from Ear You, that Singer, yeah. I saw a lot of No Lands drop from yep. her. Mm -hmm. I finally got Hawk Moon from Crota as well. Really? Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I got anything like memorable from it. Because I farmed, you know, Vault of Glass for so much. Uh, the, the Gorgon chest. That's where I got Galahorn, of course. Uh, I'm pretty some sure. Some people got that out of Crota's end. Yeah, I got Galahorn Those on old Xbox raids too. They from were... Ear those old raids were just a great way to gear up too. They were, yeah. You'd get such good light level gains, and you you just get way more powerful than any other activity could make you in a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, we're going down memory lane here, which is hard not to when you mention Crota's end. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you had a, a cool story about it that I liked that you brought up, but um, you were helping some folks, and something oh yeah, actually happened. Yeah, yeah. So. This was probably this was the week before um, Age of Triumph was uh, was coming out, so I was taking people through through Curtis and specifically because again a lot of people didn't know that bridge encounter, so uh, we were going through and just kind of like you know m warming up to to tackle the the re release of it, and just by playing it, we weren't trying for anything in specific. It just happened naturally. When we beat Crota, three of our fire team members were like, "Oh my god, that was a flawless raid!" They each got <laughs> nice. their flawless uh, uh, trophy, and that we was the last. <laughs> yeah, that was the last one that each of them needed to hit their platinum. Nice for uh, oh, for D one. So that was that was a really cool a cool memory from from those days. That's awesome. Nice. So we got to set the stage uh, and see how Teft reacts. What's your favorite class to play in the game? Avoid oh, it's interesting you you brought that up. We should go around and ask everybody, especially. <laughs> we should. I don't know what you guys are talking Wait, about. Warlock, all the way. No, Wait, what you Warlock. guys are talking about. This is disgusting. So, <laughs> war, uh, Nam, Nam, you play Warlock predominantly. Yeah. That, that's like where you started, I imagine, when you, when you booted up Destiny. You just stuck with it? Funnily enough, the first character yeah. I created in D1 was a hunter. Oh. And then... Flipped it. And then I flipped it like really, really fast. Yikes! Um, I like I want to say I didn't even finish leveling up my hunter when I was like, all right, I kind of want to play with something else, and play with warlock, and that's been like my my main since nice. since that. That's actually a good way to frame it. So, who was your first you know uh, you know class you created, and then who do you play predominantly now? We know for Nam, it's started on a hunter, uh, so ended up warlock pretty quickly. Let's go straight to death. Yeah. Okay, on the beta. <laughs> On Xbox, because I was on Xbox when mm, it came out. Mm -hmm. I picked a, a Warlock just because I wanted to see what, what was going on. It's in his blood, guys. Day one Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> you did pick a Warlock? <laughs> For the beta, I picked a Warlock. I did. Wow. And then uh, when I got serious in September when it launched, I picked a Hunter. And then I picked another Hunter. Yeah, and then I picked back. the third Hunter. Oh, my God. I, Dude, leveled I did up, three Warlocks. I leveled up a Hunter at the Loot Cave. I'm not joking. Oh, went from, man. Went from 1 to 20 at the loot cave for my alternate hunter. Oh, my God. How, how long did that take you? It's like 8, 10 hours, something like that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I had a lot of time on my head. I was, what can I say? I was glad when that got wow. fixed because I was like, I didn't want to do it, and now I no. can't. Thank goodness. All right. What about Watts? I was a hunter in the 
friend, friends and family alpha, and now I also only play Hunter. Wow. <laughs> nice. I'm jealous. Hasn't changed at all. Oh. There's never been any point where... I, my mom actually started as a warlock because we were like telling her that warlock's easy, so play warlock. And then she was like, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna try hunter after she <laughs> played warlock for a bit." And then she switched to hunter, and she she plays all three. She has all three leveled up to 700, which is wow. better than me. Nice. But um, why did she switch to hunter? Yeah, the jump I think was just Superior? felt more intuitive. Yeah, it's more yeah. intuitive. Yeah, it's superior. Yeah, yeah. It makes almost mm. makes sense in real life. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just like having directional control where I land. So yeah, mm. a warlock, Briar. What about you? I think I started off as a hunter in the alpha, a warlock in the beta, and then I don't remember when the oh. when September came out. I I don't Here. actually remember what my first character was. I I knew I was gonna play all three. Gotcha. Yeah, you dabbled in everything. So wait, did you? You pretty much started with all three, is what you're saying? Effectively, yeah. like you tried to just grind through all three. And then what about today? Like, do you gravitate towards one in particular? I, I like Hunter the best. Yeah, I just realized we're gonna have a problem for the raid uh, as we as we gear up, <laughs> <laughs> unless we don't care anymore because we're all Hefty playing will together. will obviously be on his warlock because recent in a recent <laughs> stream. At the end of the stream, Tefty was quoted and tattled on by one of his subscribers to me. Tattled. That he what? said, Warlock is the best class. I'm pretty sure I was sarcastic. Whoa. I had heavy tones of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> also, I may have been blitzed out of my mind from using triple grenade launchers in the Crucible and having way too much fun. With triple grenade launchers, <laughs> all right? So Were you a Warlock at the time? And it just Yes, he's been Warlock for... for <laughs> How else, if I'm going to be a toxic, disgusting Crucible player, which class oh am I going to pick? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Hunter. Oh, filthy Warlock. <laughs> Dawn Blade. <laughs> Dawn Blade. I'm going to use Luna Faction, sit in a Power Rift, and use Fighting Lion. And God help me, it's fun. <laughs> what is wrong? That's amazing. Oh, I need to go um, see somebody. I need professional my... help, guys. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... I started on Warlock. I did three Warlocks because, like, just to, to get, wow. you know, the gear I wanted, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I played three Warlocks. There was a command in my chat, three locks uh, for quite some time. <laughs> but so that was most of Destiny 1. And then towards the end, wow. I. Fran, I want you to be to... honest. <laughs> okay. How often? I was being honest. How often were you not a self res singer? On those three Warlocks? <laughs> oh, not? Uh, when I raided, yeah, almost. Always, but when storm trance came around, yeah, that mm. started Changed to change. It. Like actually, them with, dirty storm storm. Oh, man, yeah, you remember trials of <laughs> wrath the of the machine in particular. Their, oh. oh, their yeah. melee was so. Oh, melee. God, the ten, yeah. ten meter melee. I'll tell you what I. That was. Nuts. I'll tell you what I wouldn't do since it, it is. Uh, first of all, since I'm not gonna lie, but second of all, in the spirit of trials anniversary, <laughs> fourth year, by the way, if you didn't know. Four years. Um, <laughs> But uh, I despise sticky nades towards the end there. Uh, oh, yeah. everybody and I, did. And, I, think and I, I sucked at trials. Like no, no, no secret. I mean, I got a little bit better at, at playing PvP because of it, and that's why I always liked it. And I loved callouts. That was my thing. I'd be like, all right, you know, bottom mohawk, bottom mohawk. But I was dead, right? So I could see everything. <laughs> it was amazing. And I was like right. shout casting. That was my signature <laughs> thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm dead, but I'm gonna shout. Why I watch these two people carry me, but uh, I would not use stickies, man. I hated it. And towards the end, it was getting so bad. But even now, when I see a sticky being thrown, oh, I'm like, triggered. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got stuck today, and I was like, oh my god, it's sticky, dude. Speak and decent segue, and thank you to if you know Ninji, amazing Destiny player. Uh, somebody set me up with Ninji. You can check him out on Twitch. But uh, I was looking for a carry at the end of last week's reset because I couldn't finish uh, the zero hour mission. I was, we were just having trouble and I'm only, well, I was, don't get worried, Teft. I was like 670 something. So Yikes. I've been doing my grind. Yeah, I'm fine, don't worry. So uh, <laughs> dude, he just soloed it and he was using stickies though. Really? Uh, and I was like, oh, interesting. Probably with the so, fallen yeah. armaments. Armaments, right? so exactly. Throw the stickies, and it was stickies, just... stickies, stickies, stickies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, was impressive. that makes sense. All right, but, um, Anyway, maybe back to Nem as well. Just wanted to set the stage for uh, where you came from in terms of your destiny. Nem, I got a question. Classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah what's up? In uh, as your journeys as a warlock in D one, how often would you not be self res warlock? <laughs> what's your problem with it, by the way? <laughs> is it the fifth? <laughs> because I'll tell you why, man. The reason you had no DPS on your supers, you did give that up. 
I mean, not much anyway. Well, it, yeah, you also gave up the ability to die. Yeah, you gave up the ability to die and also make <laughs> more free teammates. You were like, you guys handle this situation. I'm going to make sure I stay That's alive. Right. <laughs> what your ran- clanmates would die life. and they'd resurrect themselves and be like, oh, I'm making orbs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually think I actually used to say that. Everybody. Look, so when, that, all I'm saying is that when it came time oh. to push the Templar down, Y'all were looking for us warlocks, all right? Mm-hmm. It's true. No, it's true. I was definitely, I was in a few groups. That My rift with warlocks goes all the way back to the beginning of D1 with a friend of mine who was triple warlock, and I was triple hunter, and he was always on a self-res, never using his goddamn super every time he raided, and it pissed me off, man. <laughs> Some of that's fair. Anyway, uh... So maybe back to the world of Destiny 2, Nem, uh, mm-hmm. kind of set stage of where you're at with it. Um, you uh, you made a video recently, right? And I wanted to point that out, but it seems like you have a lot of fond memories of one, but you, I think, I assume you were playing Zero Hour mm-hmm. or something, and you decided to make this really cool video, but maybe tell us a little bit about that. I thought it was a cool video. Thank you. Yeah, um, so I don't know if you guys know, but one of the uh, senior world artists, uh, from Bungie is a big Metal Gear guy. So on Twitter, he goes by Nine Hydras. Um, and a lot of inspiration from Zero Hour was based on Metal Gear. Mm. And with that, when I was going, I was huh. I was going through Zero Hour uh, with a buddy of mine, and then it hit me um, to kind of like to make that video because there's a particular moment in Metal Gear Solid Four where you kind of go through the same kind of like flashbacks. So I was like, all right, I got to take this now that I have the opportunity to be in, in the old tower and go back into D1, capture, you know, some of like the more, you know, known places like, you know, like the, the vaults and where Banshee used to be and where Eva was and where all of the factions were and just kind of take all of that and just make this like really nostalgic video, just kind of highlighting. It's like, you know, this is, this was home once and this is where it's at now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was and cool. I, you did a good job. Like cool. you'd walk by something in, yeah. in Destiny One, and then you'd fade to the the new stuff. But using yeah. the new Zero Hour mission to do that, right? Which yeah. was a cool mm-hmm. way yeah. to and do it. Because I was I was intending on using the tower music from Destiny One as well to just mm-hmm. kind of like hit the nail on the head with the nostalgia. But Journey just felt a lot more like impactful towards mm. like everything. So I was really happy how it turned out and a lot of people ended up liking it. So I was really stoked really that cool. it got really well received. Yeah. Yeah, check awesome, that out. Man. That sounds awesome. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's cool. What is it, about three ish minutes or I think it's longer? around for like maybe four four, four or five four. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Didn't we it's cool. didn't we have a discussion on the P D podcast about how like the old tower is better? I feel like I Yes, yeah. yes, we did, we did. right? Yeah. yeah, it is better. Yeah, we did. Even even in its broken down state, it's still better. Yeah, like, <laughs> let's just have that. Tower it was back. easier to get around. Yeah, it was yeah. better laid out and just yeah, I miss it personally. It, it, it's weird because it was smaller, and it, almost as we got, I mean, it was smaller, right? Yeah, and as we got something bigger, more complex, I guess, like it's almost a little too much. Like I never want to go to those other two sides. Same, like, or no. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't, I'm always I can't in, be like, bothered wondering. to go to the hangar and can't be bothered to go. It's visit true the though. It's you know what it is. Things just aren't close enough to each other. There's like long hallways between everything that you don't need to do much, and I think that's something they should look at for um, you know future towers or whatever they will be. <laughs> but um, as we as we get into probably the show and the news this week, we got to know him. Did you catch uh, last week's update? And where do you stand on the nerfs? The whisper nerf, the super, you know. Uh, exotic oh, yeah. nerfs and all that. Okay, so as far as the weapon nerfs, some of them I can understand. Like, I, I can understand the Whisper nerf. I'm a little confused as to, like, why it was shipped as Black Hammer if it's having the same issues that it had in Destiny 1. <laughs> um, a little confused about the Sleeper one, just because I don't think the Sleeper Ricochet was too much of an issue. It was, like, maybe used on yeah. Argos on occasion. Mm-hmm. Unless some of these changes, you know, are directly tied to some of the encounters in the raid, and they're thinking ahead of time to kind of prevent yeah. some of some cheeses and stuff. That's what but, Watts was saying last week, and I was like, "Yeah, you're probably right about that ricochet in particular. It's so specific. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> really specific. Yeah. Um, as far the one that hurts, the one that hurt me in the soul, 
was my skull. Mm. Oh, the skull of Humkara. Those, my skull. those Novas, dude. Those Novas are so tasty. Yep. It's going to be a new world to get used to. But but here's the thing. I get I get that they're, they're trying to make people uh, or guardians use their orbs of light more because I think that's one of, one of the reasons why they stated that we're not using each other's orbs to get like our super back. Um, so they're bringing that down a, a little bit. But I feel like them nerfing Skull and Orpheus, and I don't understand why they're doing the same to Shards of Galanor and Ursas mm -hmm. because those were already hit. They already and touched they're nowhere near. Hit, yeah. yeah, they're nowhere near as, as powerful as they were. So I don't know, it's strange. But these changes aren't going to make me want to use Sunbracers or Wings of Sacred Dawn or Ashen Wakes anymore. I'm still probably going to be using my skull because if I mean if I'm still getting some sort of percentage on my super back, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe before we kick it back over to them, where where can folks find your stuff? If people know of Planet Destiny, but remind folks where. But also, I understand you know you do your own YouTube, your own Twitch sometimes. And oh yeah, um, I'm Twitter. if you wanted like talk to me on I'm really active on Twitter. And that's where a lot of like, you, you'll see silly videos or gambit inva invasion. So twitter.com slash nem plays. Um, the YouTube channel is the same, uh, youtube.com slash nem plays. And all of, uh, you know, the, the Planet Destiny YouTube channel as well. You'll see um, some of my videos there. And that yeah, video just, you just talked about, thank you for the memories. That's on nem plays as well. That's right? on my personal one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, did I miss anything? Uh, you say? No. No. So you got everything. <laughs> so last week I had to edit the video for the podcast mm -hmm. and I wasn't on the show and I was infuriated because I wasn't on the show. <laughs> you guys were talking about the weapon nerfs. I agree with everything you guys said about the armor nerfs, but the weapon nerfs, especially the whisper of the worm, I got to say, I'm loving that they're nerfing this gun <laughs> like a hundred percent, like very happy. And not only that gun, but all of the guns that they're nerfing, come from destiny one mm -hmm. true and i gotta say i'm happy yeah. about that because i want to be using new stuff not four or five year old stuff like yeah. i don't want to be hmm. standing at the back of a room in another yeah. raid shooting a guy with whisper of the worm oh, like, i yeah. just don't want to be I'll doing break board perfected here we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was we'll another a destiny little closer gun. yeah just a little bit closer the same thing another <laughs> destiny one gun that's interesting yeah, but, yeah where were you last week we knew you uh you couldn't make it but uh would have been interesting to have that devil's advocate yeah voice on that one must have killed you to do the edit you're like what it was i was you should have just recorded something <laughs> just hi guys this is briar um <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't want to hear what they said. Let me tell you what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Prior hijacks the podcast. <laughs> so today we got a TWAB, and we also got a update about Chronosaro. You guys want to do the Chronosaro update first? Yeah. 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 All right, because a lot of that stuff is covered in the TWAB too, so we'll be able to skip some of the TWAB when we get there. Mm -hmm. So they're changing how the world's first run is going to go, right? Yep. They're maxing the power level that guardians can be or that that they effectively fight as for the raid so no matter how hard you grind in the first encounter of the chronosaro raid you're only going to be able to fight as a 700 light level guardian yep and then it's going to go up i believe it's going to go up five light level for each encounter all the way up to 720 for the final encounter yeah oh, up to they... 720. So oh, I missed that part. It'll go five per. I didn't even know. I didn't uh, I'm I'm inferring a little bit there. Okay. Okay. So they said <laughs> what the do final you know? fight Tell power. Us. The final fight uh, power level will be 720. So and this nobody is can get an advantage by you know going hardcore grinding. Yeah. Right. And it, it also it gets rid of, uh, rid of one of the major worries of people, which was having a whole other team and another another team grinding outside of the raid, getting higher higher light, and yep. then coming back in and being super powerful. Um, also, this is only going to last for 24 hours. So as soon as the 24 hours are up, you can get a light advantage over. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you can go. You can be contest, fighting at 7:30. Right? Yeah. This yeah. is specifically for the for worlds first. Yep. But there's like a, a buff, if you will, or mo. It's going to say contest is active. I assume. Um, when you're loading into the raid, or maybe, like maybe it doesn't say it, but yeah, modifier yeah, character or something could be, yeah. 
But they write it that way. It's capitalized. When contest is active, players will face an enforced yeah. challenge throughout the raid. Um, but I, 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 that was the thing I said about Last Wish because I got a little screwed on my power despite playing a ton of hours per day. Um, not 10 hours a day. I was playing five to six hours a day. And I was only like five, what was it? Fourth, five thirty. I'm like really remembering what were we grinding towards then? Uh, five was that four something then? Jeez, I'm trying to remember. Um, last wish for we were trying to get past 500 into like as high. Okay. in fact, I think it was like if you were 530 or 540, you were struggling going into that. Race. That was it. Yeah, so I, was that was Briar at like 480 when, when Briar went in. I remember that. What? Struggle. What? <laughs> no, no, that's crazy. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was like 530 something <laughs> and um. And it's it bothered me because like one I had trouble getting in, but two I was like, you know they they started to um, challenge you so much with the uh, how much the it got difficult, right? And I was like, if they were worried about you grinding too fast or too hard or whatever, and there were exploits and stuff, then yeah, why not just put like these caps on it? Yeah. So it's nice to see they you know must have been thinking the same thing or you know listen to the community feedback. Yeah, I think but it's a great. Solution. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Happy in about it. concept, it sounds good. Right. But, they, um, they call out specifically like people who are like saving up power engrams, yeah. power rewards, stuff like that, and that's been a real effective tool in the past. In yeah. fact, I was planning it, on using that tool this time around. Right? So, I am now, using that tool. This yeah, time I'm still around. gonna use it. Yeah, I mean, I, ideally, you still want to <laughs> enter the raid at roughly seven fifteen if you can. Yeah. 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 Like if you can, yeah. do you think that's gonna be possible in in six hours? You get lucky. Yeah. It's power per hour. Power per hour. Normally. Yeah. You're not going to see more than one per hour. Now, who knows what it's going to be like? Actually, it might be. It, right now, it's it's quite a bit more, you know, towards the end. But um, I was wondering, like, I was doing my calculations. I was like, oh, that almost adds up. That if things go well, you'll be seven oh six, seven oh eight. You'll be in there for when you start. I'm I'm just making that up. Who knows what the power per hour will be? That's something I think about a lot. But my hope is they know what the average is, because that that'd be the best experience. That they're like, you know what? Almost everybody who was seven hundred. Upon starting this, there's not going to be any weird luck and exploits, and like you're all going to be around 705 when you start, and then from there, there's a little bit of luck with the drops, but um, but even then, you're getting power drops, so hopefully, you just don't end up with three helmets, you know, in a row or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? We've Always all happens. been there. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about it in concept, but uh, but I was wondering if you can take it far. Let's imagine that you can. Wouldn't it still potentially be a little bit of a problem in the later rooms? You know what I mean? Even though they have this cap that in theory, as you get to the towards the 720, that if you did do something that brought you higher, well, it'll still pay off because I, I don't think you're going to make it. I guess I personally don't think you're going to make it that high that fast, but um, I don't know. It's hard to it, say. If you can get to 720, then definitely that's going to be an advantage, right? Yeah, like meaning it, in the beginning, it'll, it'll keep you more capped. But then yeah, as it yeah. opens up, if you were able to, for some reason, exploit or get higher, I think potentially – it still help you towards the end, but I mean, yeah, we don't know, necessarily know what the enemy's light same. level is going to be. I would expect it's higher than seven twenty. Yeah, right. Going I mean, into the final oh, boss, seven thirty five or yeah, yeah. I, we're, we're I actually expecting seven thirty five. Honestly, that's what yeah we were talking about. I am curious now that because in my head I was like, oh, I bet you we'll go in around seven oh five to seven ten. What do mm -hmm. you guys act? What's your prediction? I think if you can reach 710, then you're probably in a pretty good spot going into the raid because you should get a drop from the raid, which will be a, yep. a big, powerful one. Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying 710 before, though, you get yes. it. So six hours, make it 10. If you get levels. the, the yeah. low-hanging fruits and do three characters as fast as possible, you should be able to hit about 710. <laughs> yeah. And that's like on, on average, not getting super, super lucky. If you get super well, we lucky, just, you might be able to hit 715. Yeah, we have so many sources of power. You know, we have the yeah. the Ada Bounties, we have Gambit, we have Crucible, we have, you know, all of the pinnacle weapons that you can kind of hold on to and then collect those as soon as it hits. Yep. So there's a lot of stuff that you can work on and mm -hmm. get a good amount of power. For yeah, if you stagger, stagger you those save. pinnacle weapons, then you can actually keep on bumping up those weapon values. And then finally, when you bring it over to your main character, you get quite a bit of a boost with those weapons being boosted up. Yeah. For when you're that's doing true. regular leveling. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's why I ask is like, I don't know. I'm used to thinking about it in more of the new bigger content drop launches where it's a lot slower. So maybe it will be faster. I mean, Nem, what do you, what do you think? I mean, even, even right now, they've mentioned that mentioned that they're, they're locking last wish 
and uh and scourge so people don't don't have that advantage but like watts said there's still a lot of different avenues and you also have shattered throne that week as well so if you're stacking bounties um along with everything everything else that you guys yeah as along with with everything you guys mentioned with like the pinnacle weapons if you haven't picked those up yet and stuff like that i'm sure shattered throne is going to give you another boost because that's you i think you get it's like three yeah, it's it's you get as many drops from Shattered Throne like you would from Scourge, so that's actually awesome. That's like a must. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, that, that's that probably the last awesome. thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up is gonna be. Yeah, yeah plus you'll have then. you'll have six people kind of ready to work together. So if you're smart, you just break up into th- two groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of just grind together anything. Uh, that the only grind. thing that could put a little bit of a spanner in the works is you have to do a bounty before you can get in the raid right, right. yes Briar, do you want to that's a good segue read that what a segue yeah i'll read it as soon as i can find it that's <laughs> good i love it uh i'm looking for it right now watts if you have it handy it's, it's under power surge in the main twab update oh uh, let's see yeah okay so power surge instead of a set of bounties a new power surge quest will be your jumping off point for season of opulence you will need to complete this quest to access the new raid learning from season of the forge this quest must be completed only once per account after one character completes the quest alternate characters will be rewarded with surge gear at power level 690 so who knows what that quest is that's what I was wondering because they it, it's funny they kept saying it in the update in this like disturbingly cautionary way like if you don't complete the quest you won't be able to get in the raid and I'm like <laughs> I think I they just really hours. want to make sure yeah. that, that that people aren't like what the hell I can't get it's in true. the raid yeah they do hop on it for <laughs> like, like what twelve times I honestly don't yes. expect this to be like a, a an in depth quest I expect Probably it to be like, like yeah thirty minutes or yeah 40 at minutes, most at knows. most thirty minutes something it's like maybe a couple steps <laughs> I. I hope that it also gives good power to those of us who are already 700. Um, I mean, I'm sure it won't give us 690, right? But but we don't know. Actually, I... Like, meaning, is there a power at the end of this? I just expect that quest to be something that actually unlocks the the raid for you. So it's just, you have to do it. Right. I'm not expecting actually, any power that, from it. That's a good question, yeah, because it does say it's a power surge, which normally is just the 690. So we're going to have to do something at the beginning for, be it 20, 40, who know, that's not going to give us any power? We're going to lose, potentially. Is that what you think? Or do we think it'll it give us It depends where it takes us. If it takes us into, like, doing Crucible or Gambit or anything like that, we will be getting rewards as we go. Oh, good um, point. But if it makes you go into Patrol, then you're not really going to be gaining much from that. Yeah. Or lost yeah, maybe like sending us into patrol all out lately. Yeah, we're gonna be we're on a lost sector grind. <laughs> maybe get that go get the drop. final kill on ten. What if it's Callus's robots get dropped randomly <laughs> throughout the planets and you have to take them down? Personally, oh my god, that'd be so I cool. Love that stuff. I want <laughs> a great idea. I want them to do more of that with the patrols. It's like yeah, untapped potential. Like that. yeah. That'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we got to de- de- finish this new quest. Did it, did it have a name yet or no? It's just the Power Surge quest. Is that all they're calling power it? Surge, yeah. Yeah. Power Surge, yeah. So what if this quest actually takes like the bulk of your time to complete? <laughs> then you're going in at 700. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> or like 702. I mean, it's possible. Prep. That'd be hilarious if that was true. <laughs> it's possible that's another one of their strategies to keep the power not like. People going in at like so 700. So the, the raid releases at four, right? And the update should go live at 10. You know, some people it's going to take yeah. a little while to download and install that update. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, actually, they talked queue, about that. Um, right. That they're pushing the update live at 8 a.m. So you should have two hours to download it, get the copying done if you're on PlayStation because that takes at least 30 Oof. minutes. Yeah. And yeah. the game will be down entirely between. Um, it will be completely hours. down. So it will start back up at 10 and, and people should have two hours to get ready. Uh, and then hopefully there's no problem with the server with everybody queuing up. But it is going to be a Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, hopefully it goes well. The last couple have gone pretty well. They've but gone really is... well recently, yeah. Yeah. But I was happy to hear there's a little bit of something new. I mean, maybe it's like Scourge where right they added some trip wires to some pads and 
but we don't know. Maybe there's these callous robots, like Watt said. We gotta go do that. <laughs> I would love that. But yeah, hopefully. Yeah. It's yeah, about, I mean, whatever definitely it is. about callous, right? It do have callous's yeah. face on all of the mm -hmm. season of opulent stuff. Yeah. He's a really interesting character. I'm really glad that we had like a bad guy who we didn't just kill and now he's gone. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He's got it's more character story. than just a bad guy, right? He's got yeah. like, he's got some depth to him. Yep. Yeah. He's great. Uh, there's some other changes that we should probably go over in the TWAB. Uh, Gambit bounties, uh, they say we didn't want rewards from the Drifter to be the one primary, one of the primary sources of powering or of power following his run as the central character for Seeds of the Drifter. As a result, power boosts received from Gambit bounties will decrease once you've achieved 700 power. They will decrease even further once you've re reached 720 power. Gambit might not be the way you want to go right off the bat. <laughs> no, you want to go to you want to go to Mr. Sweeperbot. He's got all the he's got all the goodies coming That's into right. this new content. Uh, prime attunements one on day one. Prime attunements will be reset to two charges for each player. So if you haven't played for a while, maybe you're trying to save prime attunements up. Uh, well, they're just going to be reset. So you can grind as much as you want the week before. Uh, you don't have to worry about you know resetting that you'll receive two new prime attunements even if you were playing right up to reset we want you to be able to play your favorite character without it impacting your power leveling strategy and they talked about in the previous twab mm -hmm. uh the chronosaur raid begins on day one of season of opulence at 4 p.m pacific time yep that's 7 p.m. for me, so we're going to have to make this a quick raid, guys. <laughs> Don't <laughs> even start run. with us. Quick dude. run. 30 minutes. Speed <laughs> run. Let's get this world's first real fast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. It's almost bedtime. I mean, if it's like Scourge, you might get your wish, but we'll True. see. That actually still took me a while. Um, yeah. Newsflash, guys. I'm not going to help you out. No, uh, we just we, we ended up still taking a while, um, and we did take a break for dinner once the world's first was kind of conquered. But um, Scourge was what? Was that like how many hours was that? Do we remember? That was a it was fast. Pretty fast. It was Two pretty fast. Yeah. So yeah, but I what, what's everybody's expectation? I'm expecting, frankly, something along those lines. Like I don't it, expect it to suddenly be like. It sounds like it's mechanic maybe, based. So I'm assuming that it's going to be. It does like that where it's as okay. soon as people figure out the mechanics then it's who can execute it the fastest yeah like yeah, one just, big boss and a couple mechanics yeah i, I, mean, I hope it's not as with mechanics though it depends on the difficulty of the mechanics too yeah. i mean the last switch mechanics yeah. took us a long time what if it's just the vault five times in a row different <laughs> vault <different> five volts <laughs> <laughs> what were you we gonna say forever now? Oh, I just hope it's it's not as mechanical as Valkor, because that's probably like my least favorite raid. The Spire of Stars. Do you think that it's just, yeah. just the mechanics though? Like... Were not as fun. I don't know. It just takes too long. It's it's one of those things, kind of like like Oryx. If like one person messes up, yeah, it's over, and you got to start over yeah. again. The yeah. pressure. Yeah, and didn't, didn't I, snipe I wasn't the night. crazy. Yeah, I wasn't too crazy about the hot potato. Uh, mm. mechanic, but yeah, I just oh, I like the hot potato mechanic. I thought that was fun. super intensive. We'll see. I mean, I'd be really happy if it turned out to be something as big as like you know Wrath of the Machine or something. Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't expect that. I mean, we're at the end of this season of content. We know that they're clearly gearing up for something. It seems. Um, yeah. So yeah, they've had to do what uh, Last Wish. And scourge, and now this, like all within one year. Um, yeah, you so see, that's, still, that's what's interesting. I, I, I don't really see them putting in a big raid and only having it be relevant for three months. You know? Yeah, oh yeah. I think, I think it's it's like going to be more that's than a, a raid layer. Like scourge, I would say was more than a raid layer in terms yeah, of experience. Yeah. But um, I don't expect it to be that big, massive content update type of raid. I would expect maybe four hours ish kind of raid experience. Not a last wish type of raid. No. Yeah, last yeah. wish was. <laughs> last wish was a big boy raid. Yeah. Although they yeah. could just throw in a mechanic that people just can't figure out, and yeah. then people will be stuck it on it. Be. Yeah. What if they just put Niobe Labs smack dab a new one? Oh no. <laughs> With no clues. And then they at forget all. to give you one of the clues, and that would really. <laughs> take a while they clearly are confident by the way because like they're saying oh within 24 hours we'll reset everything like that yeah, they actually haven't 
ever said when they believe it will be beaten by. They've never put a number on it, but this puts, in my mind, it puts a number on it. It'll or definitely be done in they're like, you, you can't do it in 24 hours. You can get more powerful than the race. Oh, gosh. So. Yeah. I mean, it's an actual sure. Community I bet wide I, gear check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I don't think it'll be that long of a raid. Um, also, in the good swamp, it, it did say that. Thing, things are changing. So, of course, the last update was all about the Drifter. But now we're going to be having Benedict9940 is our source for brand new secrets and rewards. So he's going to be a part of our, our weekly routine, Mr. Benedict. Mr. Guess Sweeperbot, it. once again. To, we got to run downstairs all the time now. <laughs> Look, yeah. I was just at the old tower, and frankly, I think he's got more important things to do. That would be funny if he shows up there eventually. It's just sweeping. It's funny after all this um, time that thing is still like demolished. We were busy like killing Callus and yeah, scourge of the past. How many years, years in game them? has it been since since the Red War? Yeah. Like, well, I would, it's rubble. I have no idea. We're not dealing with it. I mean, all the <laughs> NPCs in the tower seem to think it was just yesterday, it, or it's still going on. <laughs> They still talk, yeah, that's right. Like it's yesterday. You're right. <laughs> Maybe it was. You don't know the universe, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> and by uh, the way, there's uh, gonna be some changes to the Eververse store as well. Yeah. Yeah. I actually really do I like these changes. I know we don't like talking about Eververse, but I think the changes to Eververse are good. Yeah, yeah this is a big gonna be deal, more actually. of a direct pick kind of thing where you're actually gonna be able to just buy the thing that you want instead of getting loot boxes, which yeah. I yeah. think is a important change for Bungie to be making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's good. No, go ahead. Uh, direct pick: every new Eververse item in Season of Opulence will be available for direct purchase via Silver or Bright Dust. Most of these offers will be time limited, with new items available weekly. So if you see it, grab it, because it might not come around again for a while. Yes. Spend up that um, dust. There also be greatest hits. Season Opulence Bright Engram will contain a collection of community favorite legacy items with a focus on the best of year one. If you missed out on spicy ramen or the selfie emote, Season of Opulence is your chance. So they'll still have the Bright Engrams, and they'll have you some year one stuff in them. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, what I was going to say before was, I think you may have even said it, but it sounds a little closer to like Apex where you can still earn in-game currency and that takes a while to do, but, or you can just buy it if you see it, yeah. which is kind of nice um, with the stuff that's in there overall. Because yeah, frankly, I've run into stuff now and just managing Bright Dust versus not. And of course, <laughs> the amount you might have to spend to get enough Bright Dust. And yeah. Nobody really likes that. Um, and it's yeah. important that it says it does say that you can direct purses via Sova or Bright Dust. So it seems like there's going to be more options to just pick from. And then we, we, of course, have those options to pick from now that we can just pay Bright Dust for. Um, but I'm glad that they're sticking with that because it, it makes it to where you can just direct purchase in whatever way you want. Yeah. So uh, I, don't know, I, like, I like this trend. I wonder if everything will be purchasable via Silver and Bright Dust. Like, or if some things will be only purchasable the, via Bright Dust and some no, things will be purchasable with Silver. It says every new, every new, but every new Eververse I, item in Season think, of Opulence will be available for Silver. That's or better dust. because that, that means you don't have to just hope to get enough Bright Dust. That's what I'm saying. It seems like they're yeah. doing away with it. But right. so, yeah. What I like, what I was thinking about that is that it could potentially be kind of, kind of like the same system that we have now, except that like you can buy it, it, you can buy whatever you want with the silver, or you probably have to wait until like the next weekly rotation if you want to For buy it with the bright dust. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, yeah, really? We have, if you looking, if you like. yep. if you look at the the new the layout image. of it, you have the bright dust bottom section, and then you have like the silver section. So my guess is that all of those things will eventually come into the bright dust section, but you know. Uh, wait though, but wait. oh yeah, it's showing on the left side. You're saying, yeah. So the bottom one is what you can buy with bright dust. Yeah. So maybe just so I, because now I'm confused. I pictured more of a yeah Apex or Anthem even where you could just use either currency. But you're saying that the bright dust section might feature different things 
Kind of like how it does now. It looks, yeah, yeah. And it looks like you can still buy a best of year one Engram, which is still a loot box. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There's some stuff on the left, though, so there might be some deeper pages that you can actually dig into with the bright dust. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see, obviously, on, on launch. And, and like we said, it does specifically say that every new Eververse item will be available for direct purchase via silver or bright dust. So, But, but when is... You made a good point. When yeah, is the question? Because they, they mentioned, well, just they mentioned that you need to it. buy it before it goes away. And then if it does go away, it's going to come back at some point. So I do think they're going to stick with the rotation. So... Shackles, um, she linked me this image on Twitter before the show, and it's a uh, DMG answering some questions about this. Okay. Um, and he says a majority of the items will be available for Bright Dust cycling throughout the season um, on the Bright Dust storefront. Um, and then on another reply, he says that there's a small amount of items that are going to be available for direct purchase with silver only. And they're going to highlight those items via uh, Bungie when they're live on the storefront. Um, and that the the best of the year one Engr Engram available in Season of Opulence will only have year one items from Eververse. Okay. okay. So, if, okay. Um, I, so, um, my guess is how it's going to kind of work the same as how it does now. Where, you know, there'll be a bundle like the Outbreak, you know, tournament mm -hmm. bundle. And you probably, you're probably always going to have to pay silver for that. But there's going to be a bunch of these other items that you can just buy with. Right oh, there. okay. Well, I definitely misunderstood, though. I'll say that. I was like, oh, like maybe I can just use either. But there's still going to be, in other words, something will be in Bright Dust that I forgot to buy. And you can only buy it with Bright Dust then, potentially, not silver? Yes, it looks and like. If you it's... get Bright Dust, do I still have to have bought stuff and dismantled it? It's the only way to get Bright Dust Pretty as far sure. as we know, yeah. right? Wow, this is super confusing. Hmm. Way more confusing than that sentence says, as opposed to being offered. That's what I'm thinking. Right. <laughs> I was like, why not just let me buy it with either one? <laughs> the sentence says, for direct purchase via silver or bright dust, and it gets way more complex than that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't look through all the, the, the detail there. But uh, but either way, I think they're making some improvements. I mean, do you think well, it's, it's, to me, Activision? It's, it sounds like Tess is getting a, a store buff. Like she's getting a store, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, she's getting more. It feels like it's literally the same as we have now, but they're changing the way the store looks, and they're adding mm -hmm. a really a good thing, in my opinion, with the armor because now you can just buy the full armor set as a single per class bundle. Yeah, so yeah. You can like just that. be like, I like that armor. I'm just gonna buy that bundle. I got it. Yeah. Boop. There we go. I do um, like that a lot because I'm always like, wait, do I already have this from Bright Dust or, you know, that whole deal? Yeah, it seems pretty much the same. It's just there's going to be more direct <sighs> purchase stuff. Yeah, it's like, for example, I, I think if I'm understanding how they're, they wanted it to work, it's like, let's say you don't have the Hateful Wish ornament and it's not on the weekly like rotation for Bright Dust. You can go into the store and buy it for silver. That's my understanding yeah. of it. That's if you oh, that if it it's now. Uh, if you missed it, it's maybe available for Bright Dust. Yeah. Do you think it? Boy. You don't think it cycles, Bright Dust section? It's I'm sure it will. Yeah, yeah oh, I'm sure but, it will. But in other words, if you miss it, it may not be in either. So you have to. Is that what you're maybe. saying? <laughs> it's whatever. I mean, we're only Check a few weeks. Check the store off every week. Um, <laughs> there's a lot more. To, are we still going to look at this image? Because there's a lot more to dissect here. Um, mm -hmm. One thing, important thing, I wanted to bring out: legendary shards are showing up next to the other currencies as is glimmer which is whatever that's all your stuff but why are they showing that on the storefront i mean just because it's convenient or do you think in other words do you think there's any chance like an apex where you can actually upgrade oh. an item by using you know I another currency? do you think that say it's just there because it's we have a bunch that. of stuff like on currency. the left side but i i have yeah. i have no idea what any of that lot left side stuff is Something yeah there's to like me is hilarious about this Braytech Dream 9 Sparrow image where it says underneath, get there faster with a new ride. Like it's a fucking Corolla commercial or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, this might just be a... <laughs> It might just be a mock-up, so... Look, if that, poor, if that poor Sparrow is not 170 is speed, then I'm calling bullshit. That is not a faster Sparrow. <laughs> yeah. this, will, this will be Briar's... Uh... Fire, fire. I'll die on this hill, Watts. You watch me. <laughs> As a good eye, though, this is what we should do here. Like, let's catch it all. The Bray Braytech Dream Nine Sparrow. Get there with a faster new ride. With a faster with a new ride. Yeah, it makes it sound like it could be the fastest Sparrow yet, but we don't. Which, it won't be. It. Yeah. So <laughs> wait for, for those listening. 
So yeah, it's a very, um, you know, uh, Fortnite esque kind of appearance. It, there it's are a very six... free to play looking micro microtransaction yeah. store at this point. There's yeah. this is an interesting uh, conversation we can have after yeah. we're done with the TWAB and stuff. Yeah, well, but there's I, six I... weekly offerings. Then there's your bright dust stuff. It says bright dust on the bottom. You can buy your fire team emblem and shader. You can buy some ornaments that are showing up with bright dust on the bottom. There's a big featured item. But then on the left, you can page through, and that's what I don't understand either. There's the Eververse logo. And I think it's bright dust at the bottom. There's four. Yeah, icons. that's what I was saying. There could be pages in there that allow us some big, bigger the, direct purchases with the uh, yeah, with the, the bright, bright dust. Yeah, the third yeah. page looks like the sets, the bundle sets. It's the square, mm -hmm. right? Is that what you guys think it is? Probably. And then a, the, the cup possibly. is my guess would be this seasonal, seasonal stuff maybe because it's oh yeah, that's like opulent like seasonal stuff. armor and stuff. That's yeah. Perfect. That's what I was wondering. Well, with how cool icons. this stuff looks, I can't wait to see what the other factions have. Like the guns. I can't wait to and... see the uh, the refresh of the world drops. This is going to be nuts, man. Oh, my man. God. Like, it's going to be crazy, right? Because oh. Eververse wouldn't be the only vendor that gets a refresh, would it? Right? That'd be weird. <laughs> I'm excited to see the raid armor. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not like a the... dirty raid. It's a opulent raid. I just want to say that mm. awkward silence right there that we had for like a second was beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful awkward song, silence right there. I'm still looking at the image. The image is cool. The armor, um, Titan's got like a really cool jacket and doesn't have super gigantic shoulders. Yeah. So you know what they all look like? They like they mashed up a little bit with Captain America, like the first movie, <laughs> and we're wearing some. It doesn't seem like a little like you know. Yeah, the hunter's got World like War a little One cross Force. body bag. Yeah, you know, she's rocking across. She's also got a got a got a rope. Yeah, it seems like there's a little more like to leather. wrangle some. <laughs> yeah, leather. Oh yeah, there's a rope. Wrangle some dogs. Oh yeah, <laughs> some war beasts. Like Callous war beasts. There you go. You know yep. what's interesting is um, I never look at the Eververse armor ever because I just I know mm -hmm. I'm never gonna use that in game. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. yeah. Like I use the cape, the hunter cape from the newest. The newest yeah. one is amazing. Yeah. So it's really I, I use that one. It's beautiful. Wait, you don't have a tower casual set, Teft? Is that what you're no, telling man. me? No, <laughs> I, I did dismantle for oh Bright gosh. Dust. I'm trying We're to like broker out Bright Dust for people. I'm you a know? conscientious objector to Eververse Store. <laughs> like I just I refuse yeah. to wear it. I delete it when I get it. I just what you just delete me. it? I get it for it. free though. Like I I got it just from playing the game. I like the. I game just don't like the, the whole game. idea of it. It just to me it just it tastes foul in a shooter looter and I don't like it. Yeah, well, you I think still have I, it. <laughs> I think that Bungie needs to do, of course, like adding more new armor sets to other things, especially Crucible, because it hasn't happened in a very long time. Yeah. Um, but I think that Bungie does do the microtransactions better than a lot of other places. I think they've hit a good stride with, I can get all of this just by playing. I don't even have to play that much to get all of it. And it's, you know, like looking at this kind of stuff, it's, you know, I'm fine with. So I, I would have to agree. I'd say the way that they've gone about it is definitely the right, the, the, the right side of microtransactions. The biggest problem is that all the efforts and resources for new loot, it, like right. a majority of it seems to be for Eververse. And just like I said, there's no refreshes with any that, of the, the vendors. No, there's no more factions. Those are gone. There's no more trials. And any of the Crucible, uh, Vanguard, and any of the planetary resources don't get refreshed. So it's like... Yeah. Uh, and if the raid gear for this raid is a refresh of the of last year's dude. Right, raid no, gear... Don't do it. <laughs> that would be so bad. That would be awful. You think it's all Leviathan armor, but slightly tweaked? I mean, it's Can possible. You imagine? Huh? It's, it is possible. Oof. It's I possible, like that armor, though. But I would hope they would. I like it, too, but... <laughs> that's essentially <laughs> what happened with... Uh, with Eater Worlds and Spire of Stars, exactly. the armor is nearly identical. Yep. Yeah. So those weapons got spread out yeah. over a very long time. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. Actually, Eater Worlds armor is already recycled Leviathan. Uh -huh. yep. uh, right. So, yeah, to do it again. I, uh, and I'm also, the Forge armor was te wasn't the Forge armor the base armor for the uh, Scourge of the Past? Yeah. Yeah, sort of. I think right. they it definitely were very similar. very similar. Yeah, they are very similar. similarities. I mean, They're thematically it makes sense. But um, are we going to point out any of the stuff that's in the store for those listening or watching? I think it's worth pointing it out. It's kind of cool. a few cool. We, we get there. a preview. We get a preview. That so, new Toyota the Corolla. Titan vest. <laughs> Everyone, every Corolla. Titan should wear it. 
you're not wearing it, I'll be sad. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like <laughs> a- actual items, yeah, this new Braytech uh, Dream Nine Sparrow. It's got like little. What did you describe? Like hover pads. Hover pads. Yeah. 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 On the bottom. Did they make a sparrow that kind of looks like that before with the hover pads? It looks. I don't really remember amazing. those. They're like a bunch there of was... dish plates on the bottom of the sparrow. There was one that was in an Eververse bundle that it looks like it had almost like an energy hover fan kind of a thing on each side. Mm. Oh, yeah, it had fans, I think. Yeah. yeah. Just a little different. Uh, but then we've got, uh, I don't know how to pronounce Sabridge. Is it the Sabridge salute? But that's where you, like, chop the top off a bottle mm-hmm. of champagne. So I'm wondering yeah. if it animates. So you're like, I don't know, a pirate? Cause it's got, I totally like, a... want to squirt champagne over all my raid buddies. Yeah, it's that's cool, cool but it looks like, it, it, you know, it's going to cost you. be like, like, I really hate the Eververse store. And he goes, do 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 He'll make an exception for that one. <laughs> but uh, you chop the top off. I'm assuming it animates. Yeah, and it like maybe it, it pops. It's shit. got a fizz, you cut right? That top off. Yeah, yeah. it's got. I think it will. It it looks like it's showing it. Uh, there's an arbalest or- ornament called the Baron Waist mm-hmm. for about 700 silver. There's the quick hug. I guess is that like where you go in for an awkward hug with someone? That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah you it's hold like, X you, or you sort of torn your head away. You're like, yeah, it's yep. great seeing you, and you know you don't want to get too close. I think that's kind of funny and an awkward hug. Uh, the discouraged multiplayer emote. What do you think that oh, is? Oh, that's that's what I'm going to be. Is that doing? a pat on the back? A, it looks like a pat on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Hang okay. in there, guardian. It's sort of like, well, <laughs> nice try. You There's a few people that I know that might need that one. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, name. Yeah. <laughs> name names. <laughs> you can name my name. You haven't even played with me. <clears throat> I don't know, but there's a particular champ out there that might need it. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. I just thought it was worth pointing. That's a fact. I know you don't normally spend as much there's time like, ever. There's like a ghost with, uh, if you go further down from the to the different mm-hmm. image, there's a ghost with like... Bags. Some bags? <laughs> With purses. Does he, man purses. Does he give me oh, um, saddle more bags. storage? Saddle bags. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a ghost with, like, um, Do I get more vault space when I get that ghost? Yeah. I put my stuff in there? <laughs> Please. Oh, my goodness. I would spend upwards of 2,000 silver on such an item, good sir. Oh, uh, actually, that maybe that's a good segue. Is the wrapped and opened refund system, and I don't know, do we want to go over... Any of that. Sure looks like a Leviathan e- uh, emblem up there too, huh? With a cup. It's definitely to do with Leviathan. Yeah, we. I mean, we well, always knew that it was going to be to do with Callus, yeah. right? Because in every, even at the very beginning when they first talked about opulence, there was this door with the Callus yeah. thing on top of it. So we know that it's something to do with Callus. So I hope they just keep going down his story. I want to know more about him and why yeah, does he I'm want to get back us? to it. Why does do he want to Do you think they wrap it up here or do you think they keep <clears> him alive for future? For year three? I think it could be – I think he might be still alive for a while because we – to your point earlier, it's like they got this new raid. I think we're going to continue some of this into you know, the next whole year and then maybe whatever comes with a bigger update in an extra. So, yeah, maybe his storyline will still be hovering around. But um, uh, Yeah, I, I, I uh, like having him around. I think it's cool. Kind of I like the story yeah. of, yeah. of Callus, and I like the idea of there being this like this emperor that's like – you know, he's out for stuff, but it's kind of, it's gray area. You know, he's not necessarily. Well, like good and bad. Yeah, he doesn't. We know. Yeah. We know that Callus has had some kind of contact with the Triangle ships. Mm. And all, all basically everything that we've done up, up until this point in Leviathan were basically his shadows now. So we're kind of like almost his guard. Uh, and maybe the story is going to progress on that. I mean. Crown of Sorrow could also imply that you know he was he was the Emperor of the Cabal, but now he's just kind of like stranded alone in this in the ship. So mm-hmm. mm, maybe we board maybe his continue. ship to fight the Triangle ships. Are you saying in this update, Watts? <laughs> I, I maybe I mean... it's possible. <laughs> you know, I would take take Callus' ship for a little spin. And uh, <laughs> do our guardians triangle? know about those Triangle ships? The three D. We saw a point. in a dream. So when we oh that was our dream it wasn't that just was a our player cutscene oh wow I think yeah. it was real context for us. I didn't know that yeah that was that was the only time when we I think our player has seen them in in that dream that nim knowledge man mm. that lore right. knowledge how did you know that was a dream <laughs> <laughs> are you a lore expert as well Nim? I you know, I like sure you're the very lore. Nice, I, I follow a lot, lot is is mainly of like the hive lore but I do like the lore of the game so, yeah. nice okay All dabble right. here and there. 
Good to know. Are we uh, speaking about triangle ships? Are we allowed to give spoilers for the final invitation of the nine or no? Hasn't it been out? You know what? I'm not even week. caught it's up. It's been on out it. for like a week. Is there a right? cutscene? Yeah. There is. No, I don't want to hear it then. Actually. What? Oh, it's been out what? for a week. People expect us do... to talk about it. You should. Act. Okay. You just do it. It's fine. It's like no, just a cutscene. I scene. mean, like, if people people don't if people don't want he, to, I don't want to. What I would say here's people. what I would ask is we've got one more week before reset. If we talk about it next week instead, maybe is that okay. still relevant? Like it's still relevant it's next week. Just, sure. It's. It's uh yeah. You t I don't want to you be that guy. I'm a new guy. Everybody's <laughs> gonna be mad at me if I say don't talk about it. And you're oh, like, this is a perfect situation, really, Fran. We'd much prefer they're mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you I could totally just, you could just pull it. your headset off, and then yeah. we'll just no, do no, like no, no. I honestly, when we're this ready. is my bad. I totally yeah. I'm not caught up. Let's just. Fran, I, you I can should take your, take your headset off. Do you think it's you worth like seeing it on my own? How far behind are you? I only did the first week, I guess. Uh, you're okay. very far behind. You need to. You just need to watch it on YouTube. You are like two months behind. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. This one I don't. I don't mind as much about uh, the pork chop cutscene. I I would have wanted to see it. So let's dive um, into it. We should. Well, Nem, do you want to take it away as our local local lore, lore master? Yeah. The DCP yeah. lore master. Sure. So, for the last invitations of the nine. Um, once we get to the hall, the emissary uh, tells us that, you know, there's something else that the drifter should have informed us of, which he hasn't. So she shows us. And the cutscene starts by showing uh, Drifter hanging in his old tower spot, <laughs> talking about, you know, that this scam, you know, this is, this is going to be like his, you know, his ticket to salvation. And he's flipping his little jade coin. And then next thing you know, it never drops. And he's all of a sudden just teleported into the emissary's area where, you know, the horses is, is there. And um, she basically tells him that they're, her and the Nine are done watching over him. And that for him to keep playing his game. Um, then the next thing you know, the coin falls back down onto his hand. And when he looks at it, instead of his little, like, snake symbol... You have the triangle ships. Really? Yeah. He flips the coin and it's triangle ship. Mm -hmm. And oh, if, wow. if it's any indication, you know, when we see that coin being used in Gambit, it's to indicate what enemy race we're seeing or we're going to fight right. against. So yeah, they're coming. Yeah, see, so now I know why you said that. It does. Wow, that changes everything. It seems like it, why bring that up right now if it's not coming down the pike? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we could just be having a giant lead up to, you know, maybe September release is all about the triangle ships. That's possible. Um, so we could just, yeah, every so, every content drop, we could just be leading up to that. And that's kind of what I said I wanted the season pass to be was like telling this extra lore story and building up to the other content drop. And then you have you know, maybe another season pass that builds up to another big content drop and we keep the story going like that. That yeah. would be cool. I'd be down for that. Like no triangle ships and like happening right now, but we see <laughs> a little more of it now and find out a little bit more about what Callus yeah. has been up to and Drifter or whatever. And then we're like super excited for September and yeah. whatever that rate is. But, you know. And so for context on why specifically he's seeing this, it's because he's been having... Uh, dreams about a second collapse, basically. And Drifter? Yes. So I, th I want to say, it's, I, I'm not exactly sure if it's the nine that's showing him this, but he's he's been having dreams and nightmares of these ships coming to our system. And the Drifter is afraid of any type of violence. So that's why he has like other people and go do like his dirty work. Hmm. So Gambit is kind of like his ticket out of there. So that's kind of why we're, we've been treading this road of like going down sorrows road you know m making sure that we can kind of balance out using the light but also at the same time using stuff like malfeasance and thorn which are all you know all technically weapons of sorrow yeah is that mm, cool. yeah you sorrow. said that i was like is what that? is sorrows road i'm not even <laughs> I missed so sorrows road was what dredge and your basically his path when until he became like he went from Rezal Azir to Dredge and Yor, um, we kind of took in those steps when we got the last word. 
So that's like the closest that our guardian has been to like the darkness, technically speaking, which is why, you know, now we get the thorn. Gotcha. It's very cool. So and it's super interesting, it's especially with interesting. the raid being yeah. crown of sorrows, right? And mm -hmm. we've got yeah. these sorrow weapons and. Ooh, yeah. now I'm excited for the, some of the armor and, <laughs> and the, and the weapons. Like hopefully that's more of the theme that it takes. Cause in my mind I was thinking, the purple and the gold and a lot of, and maybe it is still that, but who knows? Maybe there's a twist. Yeah. Maybe the darkness stuff is September. That makes a lot of sense to me is yeah. I mean, they've been leading teasers. up to it since the queen's court. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what about um, like Sabathun and all that? Is, is that just going to tie um, directly in? Or? So here's the thing. Like we, at the end of the, the destiny to cutscene, um, where they were showing basically the roadmap of where we were going. Um, the last thing that we see the, the light kind of reaching out to was the rings of Saturn. Right. Um, and we don't know if, if that's going to be either coming in September, because everything so far that was in that cutscene, we've hit. We hit Mars, mm. we hit Mercury, we've hit the reef, and the what followed up to that was the Dreadnought. Um, so we don't know if they're going to tie in Savathun's um, story either in september or further up on ahead but that it's, sounds way more likely to me than yeah I because i because they already I have the think, dreadnoughts and like there's yeah there's been these ideas that some way, that's in the game already the by the way y'all remember and this could be nothing it could be nothing but do you guys remember back early in the destiny two days whenever you would load into titan you would sometimes get the dreadnought intro yeah. flying yeah, so that's what. Uh, yeah, exactly. So yeah, mm. it's like, it seems like that would be something that they're probably going to bring in before they have this big, uh, big release of the triangle ships showing up and potentially a new yeah. enemy race with new, just new enemies. That sounds like a Destiny three thing to me for some reason. It's like, yeah, that sounds. It sounds like farther, timing right? it perfectly because it gives them a reason to get rid of our vault because they're going to have like the second. Oh, another like class or collapse. whatever. Yeah, second collapse. So that there's their excuse to get rid of our vault again. So we can <laughs> and then you get know the we get new again. enemies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's what the quest is called as well. Thorn again. Thorn again. <laughs> Are we gonna find like a sorrow version of Galahorn on the dreadnought? That'd can you cool. imagine? <laughs> I'm just sorrow excited weapons. for what sorrow armor can look like. Because mm -hmm. it looks that's like Crota armor. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You speak same. <laughs> um, before we do move on too much from the TWAB, um, I do want to just read the final part that was yes. written by Deej. Um, so they say that these are some of the game changes you'll discover when Season of Opulence begins, but we have even more to show next week. We're already working on a preview of new Pinnacle weapons. We've also seen a preview of the new Raid Jacket that is totally awesome. With the final points for the systemic changes on the table, we can next turn our attention to revealing the places you'll go and the reasons you'll fight. Right now, our focus is on opulence, but after the season has launched and raid belts have been awarded, we'll be looking deeper into the future and sharing with you more about a new era for Bungie and Destiny 2. Specifically so this Destiny kind 2. Of, so this like really confirms for me that you know, we kind of guess, but this is the final content through Activision, and then here mm -hmm. on out, this is this is Bungie's, yeah, Bungie's baby. Yep, they're maining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also sounds like I was talking about this the other day on uh, some somewhere else, but um, E3 seems like it might actually show up there somewhere. A teaser. Uh, it's obviously probably not going to stand up against some huge new title reveals or like a Death Stranding demo, or who knows if that'll be there or not. But um, but we haven't really seen it as a, a bigger moment at E3 in a while. I think there's a chance from the sound of it, right? Like the raid is a week before E3. The following week we've got, or days away really, we've got press conferences happening. Um, Microsoft is on Monday, um, just on like six days after the raid launches. So maybe at Xbox or something we could see a teaser. Do you guys think it's possible? Mm. Within a week, it of, almost the way he words I it. Know. I kind of assumed we almost. would have heard about something about them being at E3 by now, if there was going to be a big media push. But all you got to do is make a teaser, you know, for the the next content. But I, I don't know. I was like, does that stomp on season of the opulence? You know, because but the way it's the way he said past, it. Right? He says, 
you know, well, yeah, he says after the raid belts have been awarded. I mean, that happens within quote unquote a day as long as uh, yeah. it's there. And he, in other words, it almost I, sounded like next week's update will get a little more info about some of this stuff. And then I'll be honest, I kind of took that as the raid belts had actually shipped out and they got them. <laughs> that no, that takes like a long time. Right? <laughs> I'd be shocked if we don't hear yeah. something about September. I like would expect early this summer, I if not at E3, very close at Guardian Con. Could be. No, maybe they that, there. I would guess. Yeah, that's true. Well, we do know I've been saying this. I've been saying well. this, guys. If it's going to be a big DLC, they're going to announce it in or around E3. Not necessarily with E3, but in or around. The, yeah. If it's not going to be a big DLC, if it's going to be more of like another season pass, then it's going to be towards the end of the season. With another Vidoc. Yeah. I I think we're going to get a teaser. And I'm going I'm to go out and, and make the bet that a quick one in the Xbox conference, because Phil Spencer loves Destiny. He does love Destiny. <laughs> you know, I, He's the I head of like, Xbox. I feel like we're really ramping up to something. Like, all of this just feels like we're ramping up to this big darkness battle. And I feel like that has to come in a, a September release of seeing yeah. some of that I, so you think we're going to see the 3d doritos of doom in september i'll be honest i don't know if we'll see honest, them though. but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like we're seeing more of the darkness and we're we as guardians are stepping more into the darkness but mm. my to thing find out what that actually my is. thing is i don't want to have the initial response of seeing the these this new enemy race with a small size DLC, like I, it's got to be know. Well, september i'm no, i would mean september right which would hopefully be a large right so if they are going to go, if, so my thought is if, if they're going to go down that path, it's got to be a Taken King size expansion that they do this with. Oof. That's a big ass. Yeah, I would honestly a, even I don't, I don't want to see it if it's not, man. Like if it's, if it's going to yeah. be a small DLC, I don't want to see those ships in a small DLC with like a little bit of content. Yeah, I agree. I, that, I, that's I'm thinking honestly, they're going to save them for Destiny 3 at this point. I, yeah, I would say that would be like a full-fledged release for but that that doesn't mean that what watts is saying can't be true like we could still follow some sort of introduction because i mean they were way the hell out there <laughs> no, that's true i mean we could go to the dreadnought we could start having that playable space come back you know they could uh, introduce more darkness type of things with that more sorrow weapons and all that um yeah, it'd be cool if destiny they, 2 itself kind of just landed on a sour note right yeah as opposed to destiny 1 which you know ended with the age of triumph if Destiny Two really like, we just get our asses. We go, then we go the opposite way. What is the yeah, like sorrow? A, really I'm like an down Empire Strikes they, Back kind of situation. They nuke the solar you, system. You we have the no movie home. Beat. Well, you. Well, we yeah. still have one big kind of storyline that we haven't closed out yet, and that's the Curse of the Dreaming City. So maybe that's true. The one that you're picking. That's just the the one storyline that. They that's have well. I mean, as far as the <laughs> September de- as a September release. What about the Stranger? <laughs> no 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 that was perfectly ended Teft. um <laughs> we still we still need to kind of like get rid of the curse from the dreaming city and there, there's been hints of Korea um being you know kind of involved with that so hmm. and Korea is currently under sabathun so if maybe we see some sort of september release it could possibly be about that that's the thing there's so many stories in the destiny world that it doesn't have to just be, you know, it's the Dorito ships or it's, you know, we're just continuing <laughs> plodding along doing our same old, same old. Yeah. We can always inch closer to these stories and find out more. Yeah. And honestly, Savathun, uh, Aldrin, the Dreaming City stories, I feel like they could all tie together with some sort of like sorrow story that gets begun that maybe launches off of the Dreadnought and then have those things come together before we get up to the the triangle ships because right. i swear if those triangle ships are let down i'm gonna be like oh my god that's that's why i had to, <laughs> i thought it'd be more of destiny 3 maybe it is i mean maybe that's what you guys were just kind of saying too maybe it will trickle out a, a, a number of stories that happen next season that get closer and closer to we go we see a little more but maybe it's in full if destiny 3 is in 2020 we still don't even know that but that could that would work for me too is you know i've already waited almost two years mm-hmm. on the triangle ships like, yeah. I gotta wait another one and if you want to oh, tease yeah. me a little bit with and you know yeah like also all like Aldrin what is up with that right now I would love um, yeah I would love some of those stories <laughs> that not being completely tied up but you know finding out more about what's going on with them and mm-hmm. then if we could get like an age of sorrow like Briar's talking about I'm totally Sounds down really for cool. age of sorrow and honestly it's actually if we look at the nerfs that they're doing it's they're making us less <laughs> powerful right so yeah I've, I've, I really feel Depressed. like we are inching towards a different 
Bungie in a different kind of destiny. And I feel like maybe it's going to be harder. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be more RPG. Maybe it's going to be darker. I mean, that, yeah, that was, those were the rumors. That's the only reason I don't believe that that's what's coming this September, that the full, you know, darkness and the RPG stuff that has been rumored for destiny three, but I feel like that is at least, you know, 2020, half away. 2021. So, yeah. If we're lucky, you know, but, yeah, they have Xbox to make that, you know, they have to make those small changes before we get to like this big thing, right? Like they could e e easily be making us kind of experience what that would be in a sandbox before we yeah, you're right. fully mm -hmm. get there instead mm -hmm. of being like super powerful. Okay. Now it's all gone. No, totally. well, I, think, <laughs> I have a very quick question for Nem or anyone in the lower world. So wait, Eris just disappeared. Is there any chance of her ever coming back? Yeah, well, given the She's still alive, right? Yeah, given given the last invitations of the nine, there's a dialogue um, by the emissary in there that she refers to two women um, that were untrusted, feared, and kept at an arm's length. Mm -hmm. And the two that pop into my head is Mara and Eris. Yeah. So yeah. they're definitely out there. Um, and I'm ninety nine percent sure we're, back, man. we're definitely going to see her come back right. um, soon. Cool, awesome. That'd be exciting. I'm I'm real, I'm actually so I as soon as we heard about opulence and they were all being very secretive about it and it's like season of the redacted and all of that I was mm -hmm. excited about it but now I know that the the raid's called Crown of Sorrows which I think is a really interesting name and all of this lead up it's it's exciting I'm really excited to see what they do and we we have no idea what that new six man activity is mm -hmm. who knows yeah. what that is yeah I keep bringing that and there's up. still two redacted uh things in the last uh, calendar that we there is yeah. Saw. And who knows what else, right? Because if it's a season of secrets, they could, you know, easily be dropping some whisper of the worm type mm -hmm. stuff and yep. all of that on us. Yeah. I'm excited. Exci I'm excited. Yeah, now that we're only, whatever, a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're so from, close. We're so, so um, close. See it. <laughs> also, in the next TWAB, just really quick, uh, Cosmo said that they are going to be talking about sandbox buffs as well as the pinnacle weapons. So we should be seeing... Um, how we're going to even out the nerfs of this other stuff. And maybe we can see some, some armor that we might end up using or weapons we might end up using in case. I was ready to see a uh, crucible sidearm pinnacle weapon though. Yeah. Not if me. they buff Mac and their <laughs> trick sleeves, I'm totally down. While I've been doing you guys the- You guys want to do some Twitter questions? We're uh, running long on tough, time. Tough yeah. yeah, we are. Uh, while I've been doing the mountaintop quest, I, um, I thought it would be really cool if they introduced a pinnacle sniper that could one shot supers that doesn't flinch as well. that doesn't flinch yeah the <laughs> flinch is reduced and a one shot supers but they'd have to make it obtainable obviously by headshotting a hundred supers with a regular sniper <laughs> <effort. laughs> or it could just be like the recluse where it's like you know play the video games and you get the gun mm -hmm. yeah pretty much yeah we did model. we did get the recluse this week it really didn't take long it was like four, four hours, hours. Yeah, I wish I could have done that with you guys. I could have used that carry so bad. Uh, I mean, I, mean, I would have totally do it again. Helped. It only took four hours. Yeah, I'd be well, happy I mean, you guys got it too because hours. you feel like it might be strategic in the raid potentially, right? We'll see. We don't know. It's a really that part of the good PVE weapon, like yeah. super, super. Yeah. That, and apparently, mountaintop is the best DPS when you stack it with like a rift and um and Luna factions or or a, really? a wall or something. And slap uh, on a boss spec on there. Yeah. It's so silly. Boss spec, yep. Really? So yeah. an Anarchy yeah. stacked with Mountaintop apparently is the best DPS you can possibly have right now. Oh, nice. Dang, I never got That's it. That's actually what I use for Zero Hour. It's Mountaintop. Nice. Yeah, I see a lot of people using Mountaintop with Recluse and then, like, Whisper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In PvE. Hmm. Yeah, I have a newfound respect well, we'll and love for grenade spread. launchers after doing this uh, quest in PvP. <laughs> I like it. Hefty's turned into a monster. I've turned into a toxic, <laughs> disgusting <laughs> monster. <laughs> No it's been about. great to watch. It's been a lot of fun to watch. I've <laughs> been cackling every time I like ricochet a grenade launcher into somebody's <laughs> face. <laughs> All right, Twitter questions. Uh, first one, GM Swagonaut says, Nem looks like Jon Snow. And uh, yeah. it's not a question, but I can kind of see yeah, it. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Honest. Yep. <laughs> Maybe Thank if the hair was a little yeah. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> the drawing in particular is what they were referencing. Right okay, now. that yeah, makes more really sense. really nice this week. <laughs> Yeah, Ash did such uh, an amazing job. Yeah, she's the best. <laughs> she is. Uh, Chevy asks, Nem, how do you get Bungie to pick your questions every time they do a ride-along? <laughs> Dude, you got to do some dark secret hive juju, man. Sacrifice a worm or and two. Then, and, then, and then get lucky. 
<laughs> is that like sex stuff? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Ram Shackle asks, what kind of edge is your favorite? Spelled Y-O-R. <laughs> do you like a solid, sharp 90 degrees, or do you like to live on the edge with 89 degrees? What's your favorite thing about working with Planet Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> I read that question earlier on and I lost it because it's so good. Um, <laughs> 89. And as, as far as the, my favorite thing about working with Planet Destiny, it's honestly just the friendships I've made with, with the crew there. Um, it's been f- just far more than I, I could have ever imagined. Um, they're, they're, they're basically family now, so it's definitely getting to work with them. It's awesome. Uh, Papa Chop says, as a well-established anti-warlock podcast, why did you have a <laughs> invite a floof lord on? That's a good question. We're going to have to talk to Pope about this, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a real good question, Papa Chop. <laughs> Ascendant Nomad says, what's the hardest thing about creating content for Planet Destiny? Oh, my God. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, Glad it all out. There's two things <laughs> I want to say that are probably, like, the biggest, like, the biggest and most challenging things about doing stuff for planet destiny is one is honestly trying to carry on the work and kind of like the legacy of the planet destiny name that tefty and holtz and everybody else that was on the team previously left for us it was it's it's rough like it was rough (laughs) to kind of like fill in those shoes because those are big shoes to fill um and two probably the speed of things so man like i don't like i don't know how mesa and houndish do it those guys are machines in terms of like making uh, content. Stuff out. content yeah it's unbelievable so definitely like trying to stay on top of of things and like the moment like a new quest like zero hour comes out tbl myself and crit buff are like are already talking discord are like all right let's, let's get on it <laughs> you you do the guide you do the review and whatever footage we have, we'll like share it amongst one another. But that those are probably the top two, um, like most challenging things about uh, working with uh, with PD. When I was with Planet Destiny, the absolute hardest thing that I ever had to do with that with them was when they had asked me to talk about something that I just didn't give a shit about. Yeah, like, like to talk about like I, I can't remember like, like a specific example. Like but to try and get excited. Yeah, to try and get excited about warlock jumping for ten minutes was just like it was brutal torture. It took me three times longer to make that video than any other video because I just the words just would not come to my mouth. <laughs> Lego Legend said, "How would you feel? How would you feel mo- about more effective troll exotics?" Things like yes. Tractor Cannon and Antius Wards are both hilarious and sometimes effective. I personally, this is why I picked this question. This is the best. I personally love to see a heavy that makes players lose gravity and float away. How? <laughs> you don't die. Away. You just float away. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I would that would be so great. That. that would be the best thing. Oh my god! Can you imagine if it was like it was like a heavy weapon that encases people in like those diamonds that Argos shoots out, and you just yeah. see them start flying away until like, they <laughs> shoot them? I love it. So they're still alive, and they can still. See what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Is that like in uh, was it Superman two or something where yeah. you throw the symbol at them and, <laughs> and they just spin away and like this terrible effect? That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be really fun. <laughs> I love the idea. That sounds awesome. More As cool. you'll Alvarado says, do you think Bungie needs to improve the character leveling system before Destiny 3? RNG does not belong in the leveling process. Mm, I don't disagree RNG. with RNG in the leveling process. I think that's fun, but I think the biggest thing right now is the type of rewards that you see when you're reaching max level. And if it's not a new DLC, like they need to, they, I think they need to improve that aspect of it. Uh, there also is the ability to improve the the chance of not getting a duplicate or the same yeah. same item. So I could see that, but I definitely wouldn't want them to have like this super clear cut path of like this is exactly mm-hmm. how you get to max level. Like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, um, I I think if anything, I'd like to see more like what we saw in Age of Triumph, right? Where we had to, it was well Solstice, sorry Solstice, where we got armor and we leveled that up. 
I would like to see that kind of thing implemented more in weapons and armor where we can really get this one thing and we can level it up and create this this thing that is truly ours, whether it's armor or weapons. They had so, that in Destiny 1 and people hated it. Well, With... people are crybabies. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just gonna say, agreeing with what Tef said, they just need to improve the downside protection. Uh, like, I mean, I don't mind the RNG, but when you get the four legs in a row or whatever, and That's you don't painful. need them, it's really, really what it comes down to. Me, it, you do need to measure the fun factor, and it gets to the point where it's not fun. It's actually mm -hmm. upsetting, and you see people around you who aren't encountering that. And you know, again, I had some of those issues going into <laughs> the Last Wish. I was like, well, that there's nothing I could do about this, and it's not fun. I feel like I just wasted time they they absolutely need to fix that you should not get a drop and it's a lower level item in a slot you didn't need and you're like wow there goes 90 minutes like, yeah. we need to get away from yeah. that yeah. i'm okay with Last RNG wish was brutal general, but... for that for me too i get power weapons and legs for every drop just constantly yeah. and i couldn't level up yeah yep and it's not fun. i would like to see them get away just... from the current system they have where i have to go do three three missions Three strikes, three rounds of gambit, five round. Like I'm just, mm. I kind of liked it at first because, like the leveling up, kind of it was spread across, like every game mode, but it's become so routine to me. And there's just some things that I don't want to do after a while because they're not adding any new strikes or story missions. I'm just doing the same strikes and story missions every time. So like yeah. I personally, at, the, at this phase of Destiny's life, I'd rather be playing more PvP. But to level up, I've got to go and do these. You know, I've got to go I play. I see what you mean. Like, because you want the power. Like, you have to play Gambit. You have to play Prime. And you have right. to go to Dreaming City. And maybe do, yeah. Prior's um, experiencing this right now because he's been forced to level for the raid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm feeling it. Too. I agree. Like, I was, like, going back through it. and But I, it wouldn't be any different. It's like, man, like, the people who did this every week and just got it done, like, they still had to do it. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you keep up with it every week, you don't have to do everything. So that's um, what I did. I just stuck with my hunter room. and I did the easiest PVE stuff for the majority of the season. I, I basically stayed away from Gambit after I got the delirium. I didn't play any PVP until past few days or the past week. And I hit 700 in about two months off of one character, not doing other characters. Um, and my biggest complaint about it isn't the fact that I'm repeating some activities. It's that I'm seeing the exact same loot that I've been seeing for nine months now. And I think that yeah. is the biggest problem. Because if you're getting new things that you get to try out and brand new perks that you haven't seen in the sandbox yet, it gives interesting things and interesting reasons to try it out. But when you don't, when you yeah. see the exact same go figure, you're like, oh, here we go. The loot is definitely maybe. part of it, but when I know exactly where I need to stand to take out this tank and then jump jump to this platform, this platform, this platform, and take out the next tank because I've literally been shooting this tank for two years, I'm like, oh, I had to wish there was some new strikes. <laughs> what if they just take yeah. your whisper away and then you got to use something else? Sprayer. Yeah, fix it. <laughs> Outbreak Prime. Fix it. Of them. <laughs> yeah. By the way, when you first said that, take out the stank. I thought you said take out the stank. <laughs> I was the only one who thought that. But well, I got to take out the stank. See? Yeah, the same way <laughs> every day. Take out the stank. <laughs> take out the Always stank. Always the same way. Unbelievable. It's Ferrari Friday. He's taking out the stank. <laughs> Try uh, and cover it up with my new leather and cookie. cookie uh, uh, I, I, I got to say also. Smell. Though, yeah. No new strikes and no, PV, no new PvP maps is super freaking weird for an entire year that has seasons that they're mm -hmm. introducing new stuff like I, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking story content that's breaking ground on the triangle ships coming it could just be some crazy ass fallen captain is huffing too much ether and we need to go take him out <laughs> fine that's great Man. that's a new strike let's go do that on the edz I'm... yeah 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 strikes we talked about that some previous shows, but just like adding a strike now and then that's what I thought this season was going to be. Um, I think a lot of people thought that just like every season was going to yeah. have like maybe a strike. Yeah. And a PVP map one. introduced. If it, yeah, if it was one, I think I'd, you know, that's totally reasonable. I, it's PVP has been suffering a lot. Of course we know for various different reasons, but yeah, it's not, just there's the been the, there's not been any new loot introduced for PVP for a long time. Since Forsaken <laughs> came out. 
yeah, I've had the same armor for this entire time, and yeah. you know the same kind of guns for the same. Not time. even ornaments. At least we got new ornaments. Yeah, no year. ornaments. And uh, don't get Fresh me wrong. King. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nip. I was just gonna say it's like don't get me wrong. I think for the what was it, like the thirty dollars that we paid for for the annual pass, I think the stuff that we've gotten is pretty good. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I've, they've I've definitely gotten you know my money's worth, but. I, I guess I just got used to the system where every time we saw new stuff being put into the game, there was like another strike. There's a couple new PvP maps, but we haven't seen a vendor refresh since September, and planetary vendors haven't been touched well, since launch. Eververse got new every season. That's the, that's the only vendor. That's the only vendor that gets that gets yeah. refreshed. And now she's but, getting a buff uh, in that store. Oh, she yeah. sure is. <laughs> Upgrade. Yeah. By the way, just as we were talking about that, I was paging through the Vidoc season of the Drifter where they do show like, this glimpse of season of the uh, opulence. Mm-hmm. That was like the only thing we've seen from it. It is in that Vidoc. You can go back and see it. And I'm looking at, I guess, it, almost now that I'm looking, it's either showing you the six person activity, uh, right? Because it's six people, or, actually, uh, yeah, six, um, or it's showing you a glimpse of the raid. I mean, it could be the case that because because it's called Crown of Sorrows, I'm kind of leaning towards that being separate from Leviathan, just because what does Leviathan have to do with, you know, anything sorrowful? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the six man activity could be on the Leviathan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Callus has kind of been training us to yeah. fight the super bad guys. So maybe his six man activity on his ship is his way of kind of training us right maybe but, um, he's got simulation triangle enemies that he's gonna like be like <laughs> maybe I'm gonna treat, I'm gonna but uh, teach you how to fight the yeah. darkness but yeah. not to get off track i was trying to see if i was like oh did they show a new multiplayer map or a or a strike in there i couldn't remember like if they were teasing that but no it's not there but i did notice it as ornamental armor like we saw with moments of triumph like they're all lit up in purple mm-hmm. so it seems That's like the something here. there is uh well it's new though, right? So do we know that it's that? I that's mean, that's yeah. That's, there is that from. Is it I, just from, prestige gear from the the last it's, one? It's Leviathan's prestige gear. Yeah. I don't think. Oh, maybe it, it's been it a while is, since yeah. I wore it. Yeah. Okay. I, what redacted. happens when that drops in the rain? <laughs> I know what it's going to. I think they're really just drilling home that this is you know it's linked to Kalos. It's linked yeah. to the Leviathan. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, maybe the six man have. activity drops all like, the raid upgraded, weapons or calluses with the upgraded. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, maybe it comes back yeah. to be useful more. Random rolls, <laughs> enhanced perks. Ran- <laughs> <laughs> Briar. <laughs> I'm just picturing the anarchy that happens if like a midnight coup drops. <laughs> <laughs> Multi kill oh, clip. Lord. Like you're just gonna be going for your old roll up in night two. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So you can slap a mod on there. Oh my god! Uh, Fresh King says, "With WoW Classic being a success in the beta already, is that true? Is it, is it success in the beta? Already? I don't know. I know where this I... is going. What mm. would you guys think about a Destiny Classic <laughs> in the future with the classic no. grind for Vog?" Leveling up your weapons, OP mythic class, and exotics dropping every few months. Maybe in 50 years. 50? Yeah, that's the 50? thing, man. Give it some time to boil. Oh, like, the thing is, you can't just like you can't so rely on nostalgia four, until nostalgia has a chance years. to like mature a little bit. Come on. No. no yeah. No. How long? Yeah. When when did WoW first get launched? It was early 2000, like four or five. Oh right? wow! See, you got to have 15 years for Destiny. Even, but... Yep. Yeah, we're looking at um. 2029 before we can have a Destiny Classic <laughs> show up. 2004. Right. You're right. End of 2004. It's a while. You, you I might yeah. be dead by I, then. I agree. Like production time and like even if you hand it off to another studio and they recreate it, like I'd be interested to play it, especially Trials. That's the yeah. reason that I often think about it. I just want to play that mostly. But I don't know. I actually don't feel compelled to go back and do all that stuff like yeah. much like we see with these current raids and stuff like it's fun for a while but we're waiting for the next stuff that's what we really want yeah. we want new weapons yeah, too or yeah we want to get rid right, of we've got, we got whisper, all the but, destiny one yeah. weapons in destiny 2 already what do you yeah what exactly you for here? <laughs> <We've got laughs> half of it's already there all right yeah uh thuggy t says 
what are you guys doing to prepare for the light level grind to be ready, raid ready day one? For the first time, my clan and I are going to try worlds first. Nice, Thuggy. Um, there's a few things that, that I've been doing. So I, I think maybe people might overlook having the right materials ready to go mm -hmm. because it takes 25 yep. every time you want to infuse something. So you're mm -hmm. looking at quite a lot. So what I've been doing is just doing the three bounties on each planet. That gives you 30. That's a good each idea. Planetary material, so you're you're you know you'll be fine if you just do that until it comes that, out. That refreshes every day. I just day. buy them right. from uh, Spider yeah. when I have extra money. <laughs> yeah, go, <laughs> go visit go Spider. Go visit Spider. <laughs> spend your glimmer. Spend you know a couple of legendary shards. Don't go poor. Um, if you have the option to go for any pinnacle weapons, no matter where that's from, definitely go for those because those will be going up in light level with you. So like. What me, Tefty, Briar did is we did comp and we we have Recluse basically sitting there waiting for us to pick up. Because the way that they do it is it's all done through a bounty and a triumph. So as long as you've pressed that triumph, it's going to be there. Yeah, and for have you the so bounty you on you, right? Yeah, and that's that's like a really easy way to, to be like, okay, I have a for sure energy weapon that's going to be a high level, good to go. So you can kind of focus on other things. Also, if you have like any forsaken exotic quests that you haven't done, those should be leveling up as well. I was lazy on PC and didn't do Ace of Spades, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be a nice power drop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually haven't got some stuff like loaded questions, stuff like that. I was thinking about it. Part of me was even thinking like, oh, do I try to get that right to the edge before you know June 4th? And is that gonna be? It should be a powerful drop then, right? Or loaded it... question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, and that's something you can control. So maybe I can do it in a way that I'll be going into strikes anyway or something and be like, oh, cool, now I'll knock that out and get a little extra power. Because I never got it. So it's, I wanted it, but it's good, yeah. Um, it's, for whatever reason. But yeah, yeah stuff like that. Pinnacle rewards. Yeah. Should work. Yep. Pinnacle yeah. and exotic quests from Forsaken onwards. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we got a master spreadsheet that CC Coon put in our mm -hmm. uh, chat. Yeah. And it's got like everything you can do. I. He got that from somebody. I can't remember who Sweatsicle. he got it from. I he think Sweatsicle. Yeah. Sweatsicle. Thank yep. you. So Sweatsicle actually has a YouTube video going over it, too. So you can watch Sweatsicle's video on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I just like saying Sweatsicle. <laughs> Sweatsicle. <laughs> Briar. <laughs> Never change. Briar, how do you pronounce <laughs> Tifu? Never mind. Yeah, I'm already saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really <laughs> Sith Assassin says many in the community want since to return and on PC you can quickly access your inventory console on the other hand takes up to 30 th seconds just to load, load up any thoughts on why Bungie hasn't addressed this load time issue probably because it's a hardware memory? thing yeah, yeah they just can't move the they can't swap memory that fast because of the hard drive and the amount of memory that's on the PS4 and Xbox. Yeah, I mean, remember how long it used to take to preview weapons and stuff in Destiny 1 in uh, yeah. your vault and whatnot? And, you know, it got a little, it got better now, but uh, there's just constraints in the way that it's designed that I don't see that. It's not like I think they ignored it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, as far not as much they can it. really do. Mm -hmm. The good they news that is new, the PS5 will probably help. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> they need that new PS5 solid state yeah. yep. tech. Solve everything, man. Or. Or as your beautiful community in chat is saying, get an SSD for your console. Install uh, it. Does that actually help, help with that? It does. It, it, it improves loading times quite drastically. Well, loading times, but does it help this issue? With bringing up your menu. With bringing up your menu and how fast. Because in other words, that could be out of RAM versus, say, mm, pulling it from sure. your hard drive. Yeah. So it. I don't know where it comes from at that point. In time. It probably... Is loading it into your RAM and pulling it, you know, doing that whole pipeline. But um, looks like Chad is know. saying that um, SSD does help with menus. Does okay, good to know. A lot of people saying it, so there you go. Ronnie Guff says, should they slightly buff other exotics that are used less often? Duh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as they're fun to use, though. I mean, there's that factor too. Like. Make but them they can completely like remake it, right? They can just they can be like, okay, well, what do we? What is make gonna make mechanized tricks leaves fun? How do yeah. we do that? Yeah. And they can. It doesn't just have to be. Oh, it increases your swap speed by five percent more. It can. They can completely retune something. Yeah, exactly. Rework it. I'm all for that. Rebound. Dark. 
Star Killer says, why should I even care to get any pinnacle weapons or do anything in this game when it's just going to get nerfed? Also, I... with so many other games out there right now and Monster Hunter World getting an expansion, <laughs> maybe it's time to walk away from Destiny. Maybe it is time, Star Killer. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What? Damn, <laughs> Briar. Brutal. No, I just every time I hear that argument, I'm like, so because something could get nerfed in a year, you don't want to ever get that weapon, or you don't want to have that armor piece. You don't want to use it for that yeah. year before it gets nerfed, even if it's a a month, two months, three months. We know how long it takes for Destiny to change <laughs> stuff and nerf yeah. things. You're gonna be looking at at least three months with the weapon or whatever. If it's super strong, yeah. if it's just like really good, you'll probably have it for the entire entirety. If the game is like actively pissing you off and you're not having fun with it, it is time to stop playing the game at least. Yeah, until, yeah take a break. At least for a while. Yep. And if yeah. you're gonna have fun with Monster Hunter World, go have fun with Monster Hunter World or Borderlands Three. You can always come back. I took a three month break from Destiny Two. Like I, I'm just coming out of it, and you know what? I'm having a Blast playing Destiny 2 right now. Yeah. yeah. I stopped playing PvP Breaks are good. for over six months, and I'm suddenly playing PvP, and it's been fantastic. The break was really well needed. Yeah. yeah. You just get burnt out on stuff. I mean, it's, it, that didn't even sound like the question. They're just like mad. Uh, yeah, mad about nerfs. It. That's it. Mad. I agree. I don't understand that mentality. Like you said, if you're just not having fun right now, that's the. it's a simple answer. Whether they nerfed it or not shouldn't matter. You're not trying to punish anybody for whatever. Like either you enjoy it or you don't. You know, yeah. it, it should be that simple. It, if you're uh, treating... What's our other option is just leave everything exactly the way it is. <laughs> no, yeah, nobody wants that. I agree it, with you on that. Like, If you're treating the nerfs like you got docked your pay at your job. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing for the wrong I'm reason. Take break. Yeah. I'm taking break. <laughs> Ringo the, the way, Dingo lots. said. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to right. very quickly. I keep smiling and laughing because every time Watts takes a drink from that giant cup, her whole face disappears <laughs> and it's all red. It's a red. It looks like it's thematically. Could you take a sip one more? <laughs> oh, yeah. With so the it covers her whole face. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. sorry it's great. Know. If you are streaming it. or you're doing a podcast or anything like that, get a big ass cup or a big thing <laughs> big to put cup. water in so you don't have to move. The big gulp. Yes. <laughs> Ringo the Dingo says, recently the internet reported a Nightfall emblem, which only five players had worldwide. You think there are still things in Destiny 2 that have not been discovered? Like, what is Riven's 15th wish? Mm. It's triangles. <laughs> <laughs> she wishes to get good and not die. From, Riven's going to be flying launchers. on those triangle ships. She's going to see a big ass dragon on them flying through space. <laughs> Surfing. <laughs> Surfing on triangles. Surfing. <laughs> Yes. There could be stuff. I mean, I, I didn't know this about the five people that had a Nightfall emblem. That's crazy. There's only five yeah, people that, that have earned crazy. this emblem. Which emblem? Yeah. Why is that? Like, yeah, why is it? I don't. I don't know. I don't know anything else I can't about remember it. Remember the name of of the emblem? Is it a two hundred k or three hundred k or something like that? I oh I can't even yeah, remember. but it's it's super rare. Uh, Hawkeye says, would you wield the darkness in order to protect the light? A.K.A., would you like your guardian to become an anti-hero? Hell so yeah. So what you're saying is that I should become the devil of the shield and wield the devil shield power, even though it comes with its setbacks, you get super powerful. Yes. This is going to tie into anime somehow. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> although it's dangerous as we saw last week this week it's very dangerous but yes the answer is yes <laughs> immortal hello moto says we've seen from gambit sets that ammo economy can be circumvented via set bonuses would more armor sets be viable a viable way to see bungie solving the heavy ammo problem I'd rather them nope. fix the actual ammo economy and not have to yeah, rely on perks. Can they just drop more heavy ammo? That'd be cool too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it just I don't me? understand why they got rid of the uh, yellow health bar guys always dropping heavy. I was yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say, is it just me or I? I kind of missed that that guaranteed break. That was a good from, solution. From, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, a good like solution. That. They just ditched it. Weird. Hmm. I don't know. I think they could <laughs> honestly just make heavy ammo drop more frequently. 
<clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And actually, we forget, did forget to mention, Nem, you play quite a bit of Gambit. Was that right? Yes. Yeah. That's like one of your favorite modes, right? It's, now, yeah. It's, it's, I think I have, I just hit my 12th reset. Whoa. Woo, okay. Nice. I, I play a bit. Wow. That is a bit. Yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, you know, he heavy ammo there is, uh, Definitely something to uh, to take into consideration, particularly with some of the mods that are that are in the game, like taken armaments or or uh, fallen armaments. Because if if you land in a gambit match and when it's fallen, you're gonna have heavy ammo for pretty much the entire the entire so run. And do you just keep a set that's like off to the side for fallen armaments when you match in there. I have yeah, I I have, the, I have one mod because the mod is so rare. Um, yeah. but I just, I have them on a pair of, of gloves that came, that came on in from scourge. So whenever it's just fallen, just swap to those gloves and, uh, hmm. yeah. So, and if you put the, the chest, the, if, if I, if you put the taken armaments on something else, by the time the prime evil round hits, that's even more, more heavy ammo for you to, uh, to get, you don't have to worry about the, uh, the ones that drop from the walls. So that, that's what bugs me about this is it sounds like. The ammo economy is balanced around the idea that you have these equipped, and yeah, kind of, and they're rare, <laughs> and it's annoying to have to be like, well, my armor has to have these armaments on them. They're super rare, yeah, and I don't and know. I feel like do so. You know, that's going to make them extra extra rare because not everyone can go and do a raid, but mm -hmm. everyone can play Gambit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the people that are lucky enough to get these mods are going to have such a big advantage. And you see that a lot in Gambit, uh, particularly every invasion that you get is more likely than not going to going to be either a Hammerhead or, or a Thunderlord. Yeah. And the oh, range yeah. that those LMGs have are just absolutely ridiculous. So it's a, it's kind of an issue. Eric twenty five twenty five says Zavala asks you to help him make an online dating profile. How would you describe <laughs> him to a prospective love interest to make him sound desirable? He's loyal. It's a oh, can we just upload that one video of him? Which video? The Zavala video. Like a speech of him? Or? Not the one where he. I just think of the video um, where he suddenly wakes up from all the lightning. Bubble. <laughs> yeah. Date that He's, guy. Uh, <laughs> enthusiastic. Um, right. Yeah. He is. He is loyal. He's. Um. Yeah, he's committed. He's for her. the people. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. blue. <laughs> <laughs> you think all of them is blue? Man, Hell right. yeah. And I think about it often. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like this one from Jay Kesty. Must like long walks along the wall and punching things. No warlocks. <laughs> no warlocks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. I would like, like to man, see a little. He may be loyal to some extent, but if you get shot somewhere, he ain't going to go and defend you. <laughs> Yeah, that will not come yeah. to pick you up anyway. Will not come to get <laughs> you. Got <laughs> back at the base. Must have Must. car. <laughs> <laughs> will not leave home. Uh, Dylan Delay says, for the whole crew, what are your favorite things to do outside of gaming? Hmm. Been making music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I decided, actually, I just started... Uh, this weekend to get my motorcycle back on the road. I, it's been like five yeah. years since I've ridden it. Awesome. What about the Camaro? Nice. Uh, that was a rental. And, uh, Did you already trash it? I, I wasn't nice to it. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watch anime and I'm learning Japanese. Learning another language takes oh. your entire freaking time. It's, yeah. it's a big investment. So I'm I watch anime just because I like watching anime, but I'm also watching a bunch of shows and movies without subtitles just to, you know, be immersed. Right. I'm trying to learn like a baby, I like to say. Because, nice. you know, kids are watching, they're watching their cartoons. They don't know what's going on. That's how I, I learn. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. Watch, like watching TV, you see words that start repeating. And then you're like, oh, I now can tell what yeah, that is. Or they're and then obviously holding when you something learn. and they say something, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I get it. To yep. Totally reinforces. Yeah, I mean, for me, I uh, don't have a lot of time in between trying to keep up with all these games and doing content and all that. But um, the one big thing I do is try to just some chill time at the gym. I mean, I do. I'm, I'm busy there working out, too. But I mean, it's kind of like 
I don't think about anything else, which is great. I would love to to play guitar and stuff, and I do, but man, I've I've actually fallen off the last few months. But that's in there for something I like to do outside. Yeah, I play guitar too on oh. my off time. So a little DCP nice. band. There you go. Um, in Japanese, Watts, can you <laughs> sing as well? Japanese. Uh-huh. Uh, Fallout says. Then plays and Fran Marabella perform the DBZ fusion dance together. What's bigger, their power level or their combined hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. I just want to know which one's going to be king of the north. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm getting roped into this Jon Snow thing now. So. <laughs> Jon Snow. <laughs> Easily the hair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to yeah. go with uh, there. Most, uh, yeah, I think so. Most unexpected. You open your front door to find a cursed thrall. What do you do? Well, it's like a... Hey, kiss your ass a... goodbye, man. That thing's going to explode. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. yeah, I was like, you're way too close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's All like, right, it's like, shut it and it's run. like someone delivering a bomb to your door. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah the bomb so. chases you down the front <laughs> hallway. <laughs> yeah, it's too close. If it was like out on the sidewalk, if you had like a picket fence, yeah. Mm. I mean, honestly, like if it was far enough away, like let's say, yeah, it was a little far. I would just throw like a cookie at it or something. (laughs) It eats cookies. There's no problem. I'd be like, (laughs) no, it (laughs) it eats cookies. (laughs) You're gonna give it a cookie. It's gonna be like, all right, you got me with the cookie. I'll be back next (laughs) week. You got me this time. I believe that actually, to be fair, it was a little like, I don't know if it it sounded like it made sense. To me, it did that they were going to explode, right? A few people got it. But the fact that you thought they might eat the cookie and now they're like all nice. They'll be like, oh, I could go for some cookies. But they're going to explode from proximity of the cookie? Curse thrall. It's so easy to like blow them up. Throw a fork at it, you know? Exactly. It's not, it's not hard to like, like, like you just can't let them get close. Yeah. It's like bubble wrap. popping a balloon or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like they only explode on like a humanoid figure though. Not a cookie. Oh, is no, that part of the like physiology? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they see you and they're we're like not trying to give them a fork Jesse, or give yeah. them a cookie. We're trying to throw it at them to burst. Them. Okay, so you're going for a critical headshot cookie. No, I love the critical hit. I love yeah, the oh, hefty sticking with the – so you give him a fork, and then they're just like eating the cookie with the fork? No, like, I don't know. Maybe the thralls hungry. What kind of cookies stomach, do they like? Know, like... <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's great. Uh, Dredged Aura says, why haven't our guardians used the bathroom in five-plus years? Space magic. Space yeah, pants. Space suits on. Well, what do you your, think astronauts do? Space pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think go. they do it in the suits, and then they – Take it somewhere to the sweeper bot. Need. What do you think that cloth around the Titan's waist is for? <laughs> waist management. Oh, what do you think those new? What do you think the satchels on that new ghost are for? Right. I think it's an <laughs> extra space. Wow. You can sit on it. You take it out and you put it down. And poor ghost. <laughs> like those little dog bags that you bring with you when you walk your dog. Hey, what if? <laughs> hey, what if that's also what the ghost is for? We've just never seen it. You set it down and you're like, sorry, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to you, and you're like sitting down. Oh, Taco you Tuesday. Pull your Sorry, pants little down. buddy. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> this derailed oh, so hard, so fast. <laughs> Is there anything in lore the about us eating food? Like, the, there's the ramen mm-hmm. shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't the ramen somehow? just like a. A nicety. They're there's, like, oh, remember the days when there I There is ramen? the ramen shop, which suggests that they do eat. And yeah. Kate drinks. Right, he but definitely he definitely drinks, drinks but, but he's a robot. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just for like sensory enjoyment Ouch, as opposed too soon, to Fran. too soon. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like we're technically zombies, right? We've been awoken. Yeah, yeah. we are. I mean, the we've been in, injected with the light and we're like, "Oh, I can do all this crazy stuff without having to have a metabolism. This is awesome." Like, I mean, if there's something that we definitely know and this is thanks to my my buddy uh Crip of, uh the drifter definitely has an appetite. True. He eats aliens. Mm. Was it what? the drifter? He's a light bear. He is a light bear. He's a light bear. Mm-hmm. He's just not a guardian. Yeah. Why is he not a guardian? Explain. Why wasn't that option not given to me? <laughs> uh, he's not a guardian because <laughs> like, he doesn't fight for the like, traveler. Oh, I'm a guardian. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. You didn't have to be a guardian. Yeah. So it's just like Aldrin. Aldrin's a light bear, but he's not a guardian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what that meant now. Like, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, because they, they, they there was like three different like titles. There was uh, the Drifter is a Risen, so he doesn't fall under the category of like Hunter Warlock or Titan. Because I think it, during his time, they all kind of just used all that kind of powers freely, as opposed to now there's classifications for us. So, yeah. Interesting. But, Interesting. Yeah, they're light bears. Hmm. Well, I think it's a uh, overlooked thing that we don't use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'd put some porta pots out? You know. You'd think they'd be considerate of our journey. <laughs> Jesus. That's important to the new world design. Now <laughs> we've ruined yeah. it. There's just porta potties everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Uh, Quick, the Mohican. Not, it'd be more interesting for sparrow racing. That's for sure. A couple of random. <laughs> porta- <Can't> stop. <laughs> the Mohican Nine says, "What character do you pick in Mario Kart and why?" Mm, I usually I like pick you. Yoshi because I like Yoshi. Yeah, I like I Bones. Pick Wario. Bones, Wario is dope. I'm a big fan of Bones. He's cute. I usually pick Toad, just old school. Like I always used to pick Toad because uh, it was fast, which was important as well. But Protheon says you get a million dollars, but for one year you have to wear a mascot outfit from head to toe. You sleep in it, play games in it, etc. You can pick the mascot, but it has to cover your whole body. Would you take the money? A All million dollars. You got yeah. Twenty four seven. You got a mascot. Like that. It's gonna it. make me famous on Twitch. That's your thing, right? You're the mascot <laughs> yeah. streamer. Yeah. That sounds like it's it... a great opportunity. You can't get out of it though. You can't even shower. Ooh. Is that what they said? You can't shower. I mean, no, they don't. You say know, that you're you're inferring. I am inferring. You're Just right. in public, you. But <laughs> what if I would if do it? Yeah, for that amount of imagine money. Imagine a heat wave hits. Stay I mean, in for a million dollars, like what you, you're out of groceries. You know, stay in the air conditioning. You're out of groceries. But you have a million dollars. Go to what? You or have a million dollars. You're out Uber of Eats, groceries. man. <laughs> you have a million dollars. Millionaires got to go grocery out shopping. Of, you ran out of. You just do Postmates or like. I bet you, you get a lot of free meals delivery. if you show up in a mascot uniform. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If you pick a local team, you probably could like chill out with the That's team sometimes. True. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this, oh is like, this is looking better and better. It's the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds rough. 24-7, 365. Hmm. That's, I mean, that's a pass for me. Yeah. I'd have to think about it. I feel like you'd have It'd a lot of... It'd be comfy to sleep in. You'd have a lot of dead, right? you don't scaly need skin You just, like, fall asleep that. wherever. Scaly skin. Yeah, because it's <laughs> been, like, humidified in yeah, there. Good luck, good luck getting <laughs> under the sun after getting out of that thing. <laughs> Can you wash it? I wonder. No, twenty four seven. No, well, I shower in it. I'll just, uh, I'll just soap up my, soap up my costume. Okay. Maybe what it. you have to do is take fifty thousand dollars, and you have to make a renovation in your house, apartment. You have to buy a house if you don't have one yet, and you have to uh, renovate the bathroom to full soak your mascot suit and give you like a full dry. <laughs> you have to have like yeah. a, a a bathroom situation. A human washer dryer. Yeah, so you probably don't want to throw some money on air conditioning too. Yeah, so you have to factor <laughs> that in. Double if you do up this. on the air con. You got to factor that in if you do this. All right. Celestine zero fifty one <laughs> says, "Would you choose Canadian bacon or turkey bacon? Turkey bacon for the rest of your life? This would yes. take Canadian the place bacon. of regular bacon. No, I, I would never bacon. choose Canadian bacon or turkey bacon for the rest of my life. I would totally rather just have regular bacon. I think I You have yeah. to choose one of those." That's I choose ham. The question says Canadian bacon. Isn't that all it says? You have to choose one. Canadian bacon, which is real bacon. I'm taking real bacon. Ham. You what? I choose ham. Yeah, I mean, Canadian, that is bacon. Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon. Right. Exactly. It's like fake ham. A small circle of ham. Ham. <laughs> British bacon is way better. You guys, Americans have some like What's weird British ass bacon? funky. Bacon. Yeah. What? Tell me about British bacon. I actually it's had it. It's thick and I, juicy and substantial. It is. Like it's really, really good. Thick cut. cut. Yeah. American it's smoked bacon. It's amazing. I mean, I feel like I've had some, but have you had like really good thick cut bacon? Yes. Like Southern style. Oh, America man. has a lot of weird things that. Okay. Sure. Wow. 
I'm not hating. Like I, no, I, I have to, people, gonna, people like the, the smaller, some, some people like it like smaller and crunchy and you know, I do like it. Some crunchy, people dig actually. that. The British yeah. Isles not known for their food, but if you're telling me the bacon, bacon is worth going for, I'll, I'll check out the bacon. <laughs> You've sold Briar. Briar, you would <laughs> love a full English breakfast. You would. No, you I've would had it generally. and it's not true. In England? <laughs> Yes. You don't like that, like well, then you the tomato slice to or whatever? Crap place. Uh, I bet it was the blood sausage. <laughs> that came in. Oh, God. That, they, they don't always come not blood good. sausage, do they? <laughs> no. That's more of a German thing, I thought, isn't it? Uh, what I really didn't like about it, though, was that there was just too many fried foods there. It's like hmm. everybody was serving fried food there. Even like high end hmm. restaurants, you get French fries. You're like, what? Wait, no. I don't know. You just, that all sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sassa, Good Indian food over there. Sassarodimo, Domo. During Friday, Ferrari Fridays, what's playing on everyone's radio? <laughs> oh, you know, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna loop gin and juice. My Snoop Dogg. Gin and juice. I like I guess it. We're just gonna we're just gonna gin and juice all day. You're just gonna be like low riding your Ferrari at five miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good time in my Ferrari, free Ferrari. That sounds pretty yeah. good. Given to me by Briar. Oh, we, but we're racing right? though, right? Isn't that what Friday Fridays is? Uh, we can race. We can I'm, do a backcountry. Yeah, we can just cruise. Whatever, <laughs> man. Friday Friday. There's no rules on Friday Friday. I feel like if, if I'm racing, it's gonna be something that's gonna like maybe some maiden, some Iron Maiden, you know? Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. If I'm racing, all right. If I'm racing, yeah. it's clearly got to be some hype anime intro music. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, How about? I'm your Testarossa by Sir Mix a Lot. Pretty that works good. cruising or going fast. <laughs> well, if you remember, I think my Ferrari is what all white with like a. What, did it have a red stripe or like a? I don't know. I forgot. I don't know, but you definitely wear a stripe. members ja members yeah, only jacket. Yeah, members only jacket. It. So <laughs> probably I'm gonna go with the the Gillette uh, 1990X. You know, Doctor Disrespect. So I'll just blare that or. Hall and Oates, like you gotta have Hall and Oates. Mm. Ooh, Hall and Oates, good pick. Nice. I can see the Miami Vice. That's theme what we song were working. Yeah, like that would work too. So, who did that song? Mem, what, what what's playing on the radio in your Ferrari? Hmm. Honestly, I I, I could see myself just jamming out to some System of a Down. Oh okay. wow! Okay, right. that's an interesting choice. All right. Ibantis says, if you could live in any movie, what movie? I'm going to go comedy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> just the whole genre. Is there a movie I think just cool. about people like being happy and it's sunny and it's pretty? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, yeah, I totally want to be in that movie. <laughs> it's, it's probably and a documentary lightsabers. of a really I want nice that vibe. plus lightsabers. <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough question. There's so many like cool choices. I don't know why, but the two that come to mind for me are Twister and uh, Kill Bill. That's a no. Wow. And both of those are like precarious. <laughs> like, why would you want to be in those worlds? But man, there's such a. I got it. If you want a safe bet, pop them up. If you want a safe bet, you'd be one of the humans in Toy Story. Boom. Oh, Toy mm, Story. Why? There you go. Why? Because that, that is. It's just a neighborhood, right? It's a neighborhood. It's just like chilling in a neighborhood. You're not gonna get toys. bombed, dude. Somebody's not gonna show up and like <laughs> hold everybody hostage. You know. Tornadoes, yeah, ripping There's cows no, off the ground. Tornadoes are to rip it or... <laughs> suddenly because it's like you know the, the rock shows up and has to save everybody. You know. Oh, Fast and Furious! I totally would live in that world. <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a pretty sweet choice. <laughs> it's all about family. <laughs> Paulo Umali says, "Clearing up spousal debate." All right, we've had this question before, <laughs> but I think it's important. Do you insert toilet paper roll so the paper comes from over the top or from the oh, underside? God. You have to ask. I say question. over. Who's the right answer? <laughs> uh, you might need a divorce. This is the thing, right? Is this is not a, this is irre irreconcilable differences. We need to really like look deep into this relationship. I think you just need to leave, man. Pack your shit. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta ask yourself what set of life choices got you into the situation with a under roller in the first place. An under roller, yeah. You know, it's funny. I it was on this same topic. My my cousin was playing Fallout, and he got to the 
I can't remember the the name of of like where it was like where all the sciency people were where it was closer to the end of the game and he chose to kind of like align themselves with him and he sends me this screenshot on PSN and it's of toilet pa- toilet paper but it's the under one and the caption just says oh no I've made the wrong decision here <laughs> <laughs> I uh I always think about this now because I had uh, the the good pleasure last year of interviewing Ninja and we did rapid fire questions and it was like, we barely had any time to do it. So firing out questions and it was like, this is that, this is that over under. And he's like, he's like uh, over un, under. And he's like reaching around. I was like, Oh, oh. he thinks I mean like wiping. And like, <laughs> he was trying to, Which like, he, he, he answered it. I, I was, before. <laughs> that one is also yeah. come up. Okay. Also yeah, important. that's true. <laughs> we get to the, the, the good stuff. The hard hitting stuff. <laughs> the hard hitting stuff. Uh, William PB. This is the last question of the night. I, we got through eight pages of questions. Nice. That was really yeah. good. We did it Whoa. really fast, too. William PB says, You all ate Briar Rabbit and you thoroughly enjoyed them. <laughs> it's been two days and you have to decide who goes next. Oh, no. Uh, um... Easy. There's seconds. We, we made leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, yeah, we froze like some of you. So, yeah. Briar's a tall man. Like he can last for a while. Yeah, and since it's not just one meal. Yeah, the question did not go as I. We hope. weren't gonna like <laughs> have a giant feast because you know we're like had a plane crash or whatever. We're gonna put partition out. You know, gonna we got a plan. Ration out Briar. Ration out Briar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was it. That was the last question. Like Briar witch. Uh, excellent. Mm. Great show, guys. Brood witch. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you want to uh, find more of me, I am Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. You can catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. And I've been, um, I've been gearing up for the raid on the, uh, on the stream. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5000 Watts. I'm also gearing up for the raid. I'm doing a lot of like trolls, which is very, very riveting. Um, Hard hitting trolls, yeah, but, but trolls. We're gonna be we're gonna be having the most coordinated raid group possibly ever on June fourth. So yes. it's very exciting. Like a fine oiled wheel. <laughs> the oil the oil the, the wheel got oil oil, oil, oil over the it? Ferrari wheel. <laughs> Doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> we're gonna, it's all over the tire. Squirt engine oil all over the Ferrari engine. <laughs> Who's next? I'm Briar Rabbit. Uh, instead of shouting out stuff I'm doing, I wanted to shout out my raid team today who are awesome, and they helped me get through two raids, and they helped me get the outbreak perfected. Oh, it's so good. In like, nice. I don't know, I think it was like three hours flat. It was awesome. It was super fun. Red Queen, James Work, Latest Spy, Red Devil, and of course, Big Booty Judy. You guys were fun as hell today. Thank you guys for helping nice. me out. And um, go check honestly, out their streams. Honestly, Briar, I thought you were going to um, mention us as your... Super great. Yeah, I was like, I'm a bit sad. You know, we're raiding together, prior and mm, I'd yeah. say that's awkward, but <laughs> no. <that's cool. laughs> uh, I am Fran Mirabella, FM3 underscore. I still got that underscore. I'm FM3 here on Twitch, and uh, you can find and support me there, or just Fran Mirabella on um, Twitter. Also, the Epic Creator Store, which I always mention, is a great, easy way to support. Is use creator code friend Mirabella. And you can find me over on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash nemplays. And if you if you want to talk to me there, I'm pretty active. Um, you can also find me in my uh, uh, YouTube channel, which is also nemplays. Twitch is nemplays. Nemplays everywhere. <laughs> uh, and you can find my, uh, my stuff as well over on uh, Planet Destiny on the YouTube channel. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yay. Thanks for hanging out, guys. It was a great episode. I uh, really appreciate yeah, all the support great. here on Twitch and the listeners and on YouTube and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we will see you next week. Who do we, Fran, who do we have next week? Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot you <laughs> depended on me yeah. last week. And now, because you're continue. like, I don't know. I you. And I was so like, I passed uh, it off so by nonchalant. Me. And you did such a good job Friend. that you inherited that job just like that. It was like, boom. Yeah. Now I know. Oh, well, let me tell you who's on next week. And that's uh, Aztec Cross. Aztec Cross yeah. next week. Awesome. Aztec Cross. Yeah. The boy from the bayou. There you go. Returning. Uh, and we will have more discussions about Juicy Twab info that's going to be going on there. So, yes. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.